This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For your OPG needs, go to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Go. It's a big match to start off round 10 of the TSL here at Utah Stadium. It's the traditional Friday night clash between the Northern Bombers and Launceston. And welcome to City Park Radio's coverage of uh, TSL footy here this evening. 103.7 FM and 96.5 FM. It's a pleasure to bring you the footy here uh, throughout the year. And also this evening, a simulcast with the TSL live stream brought to you by Daily Potato Co. Thanks to our sponsor also, El Gas, here on City Park, Park Radio. Great team assembled tonight. We're going to bring you all the action between now and 9.30. First of all, to my left, welcome to Matthew McAmagee. Yeah, good after, good evening, Foz, isn't it? It feels like it was uh, only Sunday that we were here and a few days ago, but it's been a good week. And uh, look, really looking forward uh, to this clash, the intercity rivalries across the river. Um, to be honest, you know, we're probably surprised that where North Launceston are. They sit third on the ladder and the all-conquering Launceston side on top. But... With uh, night conditions maybe getting a little bit dewy later on, it could bring things back a little bit, but North Launceston have definitely improved uh, since their round four Good Friday uh, outing over at Windsor Park. So, um, yeah, look, it's going to be interesting and uh, really looking forward to tonight's uh, clash in particular, how much North Launceston have improved. In the experts' chair this evening, he's got the binoculars looking at all the action. It's Math- It's not Matthew, it's Michael Maxi walker Welcome, Maxi. Uh, thanks very much, Dave. Good evening, listeners and viewers and the rest of the team. It's uh, good to be here on a Friday night. Not the warmest of nights, but uh, it'll be hot football, guys. It'll be hot football. North Launceston, a shorter break between their games, playing last, uh, what, Sunday? So five days ago, and uh, they have a couple of sore bodies at the end of that game who are out there again, so it'll be interesting to see how they pull up whereas Launceston have had the luxury of that two or three extra days off and um, rearing to go as well and fighting fit. Fantastic. Down in the centre of the ground, we just had the toss. Rob Soward is our boundary rider this evening and he's been there witnessing it. What's uh, going on down there, Rob? Good evening, Dave. Good evening, uh, listeners. Uh, Alec Rod from Launceston has won the toss. They're running to the kicking to the city end of the ground. Uh, as you touched on in your opening remarks, a lot of dew on the ground down here. I can tell you one thing, listeners, the Stan Smiths aren't built for that sort of uh, slippery <laughs> stuff on the surface. So um, it'll be interesting to see how both sides adapt to it. But uh, both sides rearing to go, looking forward to a great game. And no wind either. So um, great conditionings for night footy. Thanks, Rob. We'll hear from you during the evening. Thank you. Both sides as selected this evening. No late changes. Macca. It's going to be very interesting, Max, tonight to see North Launceston. Very much a contested side. They win the ball on the inside and then try and run. Whereas North Launceston really are a, a chipping sort of use of the football side, a lot more possessions than a lot of clubs. Does that change tonight in these conditions, do you think? Uh, I think we'll know in the first 10 or 15 minutes as to whether they've decided to play a different uh, style or not, Macca, but um, I wouldn't expect them to be able to change that type of uh, play all that easily at this level. Yeah, very much, a kick, very much a kick side first. They look to uh, move the yeah. ball out to their space. Uncontested marks, leader in the comp in that stat. And uh, North Launceston, they do a lot of work inside, of course, still missing Simpson, who's one of their uh, clearance kings. But Bradley Cox Goodyear, Jackie Avent, they've wound the clock back to their premiership days and they're really uh, playing in career best football, to be honest. Yeah, purple patch for uh, Jack Avent the last few weeks and Cox Goodyear slowly built from the beginning of the season. You see it even quarter by quarter. He's just increasing uh, his time in the middle and uh, the b- amount of ball that he's getting so getting better each week. Our stats man this evening is Dave Gruber. He's going to give us all the team stats throughout the evening. So welcome to Dave. So teams assembled and they're both teams now taking up their positions. Big game this one, replay of uh, the last two grand finals in the TSL. The Blues have come out on top there. And uh, let's see who comes out on top here this evening. Star studded on ball divisions from both sides. Alex Lee, Bradley Cox, Goodyear, Jackie Avent, Michael Stingle, the North, Palfreman, Tina McCormack, Fletcher Seymour, and Jackson Thurlow start in the middle. Up goes McCormack and Lee. Keep an eye on that battle. Avent down to Bradley Cox, Goodyear, held onto or pushed in the back. It might be going back to Avent. It is, says Max, and Avent's going to get the free first free kick of tonight's game. We've got Pierce up forward. He's been dangerous, especially in these conditions. But he goes short on this occasion to Zavent. He finds Stingle, left foot, wheel and go. First inside 50 for Dave Gruber. But it goes nowhere. In fact, it goes 
after the defensive effort of Josh Woolley. Josh Woolley goes short. Here's Hines back into the side the last couple of weeks after spending some, strangely spending some time in the D-League, Max. Very unusual. Uh, bit of, uh, bit of talk around the town. Sending a message. Yeah. Jake Hines finds Wright. Come back from North Melbourne. Gives it to Hines. He's caught. He's gone. Umpire. Umpire says play on. You got rid of it. Max calls for it as well. It's going to be ball up centre wing. He stepped right into two there. Maybe no pre-opportunity, but did not dispose of the ball. Got rid of it. The f got got rid of the first tackle. Second tackle, holding the ball. A boundary. Uh, sorry, a ball up. Centre wing. Lee. You'd imagine he's going to win plenty of those hitouts for Dave Gruber tonight. Stingle. Fox good jut. Sneaky little chiseler down the line. Finds up Pierce two grabs, couldn't mark it in those conditions. Over the top, Cox Goodja, fleet of foot, inside 50, hit up, mark. Play on advantage, off the, must have been off the boot. Missing near side is Theo Ives. Must have been touched off the boot, Max. I thought he chiseled it beautifully. And it's the first score of the game, positive start for North Launceston. They're one behind. One minute gone, Fozzle. Over to you, captain of the commentary team. So kick up the wing from the kick out. Quick transition here from Launceston. Tackle, laid by two players, holding the ball. So they're up and about early, the Bombers. That was against Zach Morris there, number 22. Oscar Van Dam with the ball. A couple of kicks out from goal. Getting a few leads, goes towards the boundary line. Front position right, gets his hand to it. Jaden Hines gets it away to Tuddle. Now to right, stream out of defence, kick up the wing. One-on-one -on -one contest. No one can take the mark over there. And a falling in the back of Tyrrell there. Free kick. So Ryan Tyrrell kicked 10 a couple of weeks ago against North Hobart. Kicks inside 50. Up here in the uh, Taylor direction. He couldn't take the mark. From the spillage. Taylor again. It's a little handball. Ineffective kick goes to Avent. Off a step from Hubbard up the wing. Far side of the ground, Tyrrell. Nice little hand pass to Casey Brown. Barrels it off the side of the boot. Here's the, the youngster in uh, Thomas who couldn't quite take possession. Paul Freeman's tackled. Still at half back now for North Launceston. The tackling is fierce. The pressure is fierce. Out it comes. Still a chance here to work it out. North Launceston finally out the music. Uh, gets the handball away. Play modeling tackled without it. Now it's to Stingle. Under pressure. Does it well to Nan Curvis. He'll relieve from fullback. Nan Curvis relieves the pressure. And he goes as far as Woolley on the chest. Can't take the mark. Boy, and Woolley go hand in hand. Play on advantage. No, umpire's going to bring it back. Umpire McInnie. He's going to go back to Jacob Boyd, another young fellow that's had spent some time in North Melbourne's VFL side. Hit up, finds Burling. Really like the size of this young lad, Max. Yeah, he's got a, of, got a bit of height, hasn't he? And also he's got a great reach for the arms as well. Uh, yeah, hasn't doesn't get outmarked all that often from what I've seen. Wearing the old number nine jumper of Mitch Thorpe. Josiah Burling towards the city end, right behind it. Looking for the first goal of the night. Josiah Burling breaks the 50, starts at near side and is going to miss near side. So one point apiece here. And Stingle's going to take the kick in. So Stingle goes short. Not Stingle Foz, in fact. Hubbard. Hubbard. And when he didn't kick with his left foot, I knew it wasn't. Back to Hubbard from Avent. Hubbard goes towards the boundary. Not a great kick. Good mark. Excellent mark. Contested mark on centre wing there. North Lawn System from Lockie Mitchell. Mitchell from half back. Kicks dangerously. It might come off here to Thomas. He picks it up now. Tackle gets a handball away. But it's taken by Morris. He kicks inside 50 to a man all by himself. And that's Jake Hines. Will take it 20 metres out, slight angle. Quick vision there from Zach Morris. He got the call and uh, pinpoint pass. Now, Jake Hines will waste no time here and go around the corner. Here he goes now, left foot for the first goal of the game. He's offline. So a couple of costly misses there for Launceston. They're two behinds. North Launceston yet to score. Ball back and quickly now to Leaf Wang. He takes off. Kicks up the wing. Nice kick finds Jack Avent. As we said, in career best form at the moment. Short kick up the wing. Finds man Shandon. He's been impressive too since coming into the senior team. His kick up here, looking for Pierce, but Alec Wright does the job on him and knocks it out of play centre wing. 
You can see Max North Launceston maybe not wanting to come back into that centre corridor too early because they know what's going to come the other way if that turnover occurs. Yeah, and the uh, the, the North Lon uh, sorry correction the Launceston forward line has been very potent uh, for the last couple of seasons. Free kick here, Max. Was that an over the shoulder? Uh, just a bit of a push in the back uh, as they went for the ball towards the boundary yeah. there by um, Pierce. So what was going to be a boundary throw in on centre wing has now gone to Alec Wright. Right to the top of the 50. Big pack forming. Going to be plenty of stoppages tonight for Dave Gruber. And the umpire says, give it to me. So lots of 50-50 uh, balls. And Curvis on Hines, which is a good matchup for uh, North. Here's Brad Cox Goodger on the outside, stuck on his right foot. Now comes back on his left. They're away through Stingle, Bales. They're all left footers. They can't get on their left. Here it comes over the top, taps it on. Inside player there coming through was Josh Rickard. He's caught with it below the knees. Umpire says, come with me. Is he going to circle now and going to ball the ball up? So they just couldn't get on their uh, right foot there. Wanted to come back on the left. Their left footers one after the other. Plenty in the North Launceston side. Ball up. Just four to centre wing. North Launceston's end of the ground. One all at the moment. The score. In fact, 2-1 to Launceston. Here's uh, Rickard. Caught again on the knees. Goes to the ground. Umpire says, you're lucky. Because you went to your knees when I'm going to give you a free kick. So it's Rickard. Inside the centre square. Cox Goodger calls for it long and strong. He goes up, good mark, good lead. Theo Ives. Impressive. Really good mark in the conditions. 25, what's that, 30 probably out now when he kicks. From beyond 35 when he kicks Theo Ives, the former Scott Jokeburn student, will do some pinch hitting in the ruck. And that was just uh, sticky hands, Max. It was a great grab for the conditions and uh, a good confidence boost for him early on. And he's on... Uh, no one weak there. He's on Jamison House and led him to the ball. And Jamison House couldn't do anything. Good delivery. Here's Ives. Another left footer. Has a good look at them to get North on. It's off to a good start. Misses again. So two points apiece. We're doing it in singles. Eight minutes gone. You're listening to City Park Radio 103.7 96.5. Live on your dial here. Friday night footy. TSL round 10 action. Woolley from fullback. Pulls the kick a bit. Out here looking for Smith. Ricard will get there first. Clean balls, both of them. Goes out of bounds. We start from Ricard, the boy from Traugan. Lining up this year with North Launceston. And all those young guns. Got quite a few in their side. They're improving week by week. Yeah. Lovely win last week over Lauderdale. Front position Lee. Wins the tap. Straight down the throat of event. He's caught though. Great tackle, Thurlow. And Thurlow will be rewarded for that tackle. No, sling tackle, says the umpire. So it's going to come back to Jake, Jack Event. Couple of kicks out from goal. Left half forward. Has to play on now. Kicks up here in the Ives direction. Presents. Can't mark this time. Plenty of blues over the back. But Pierce is there also for North Launceston. He trails into the boundary line. Eventually goes out of bounds. 20 metres round from the behind bust. The rucking duel between uh, Alex Lee and Tien and McCormack. You would think with the experience of Lee that... North should get a lot of first use to the ball, which could go a long way to deciding the game. Lives in house this time. House wins the tap. Overrunning it was Thomas. Bailey Gillow slings a kick. Outside defensive 50. No one can take the mark. Little kick out there from Taylor. Players want deliberate. And it's going to be a boundary throw in. Slightly attacking side of the wing for North Launceston. It's two behinds apiece. Been playing nine and a half minutes in the first quarter. So McCormack and Lee... As Max said, going to be a pivotal battle. He's done pretty well, Tina McCormack, for someone who really hadn't played much ruck before this year. A former boy born in Ireland. Goes to St. Patrick's College. He's done uh, pretty well in that makeshift ruckman position, especially at these boundary throw-ins. And the umpire says, we'll go again. The ball up, far centre wing. McCormack, palms down. A vents there. Bales caught with it. Musica. Well, there's going to be not real much early on, especially on the outside here, Fozzle. Going to be uh, ball up after ball up. Another one. Lee. Good palm down. He's over the top. North Launceston hit up. Can't find his teammate there. And that was uh, through Ethan Hubbard. 
and find Pierce on the lead. So they're just doing it in uh, metres here at the moment, North Launceston. They do have control. They're uh, peppering that forward 50. We'll get the stats in a moment for Dave Gruber here on this Friday night footy. Jado Hines, Seymour, out of the pack. And Salisbury didn't have that. Umpire says Salisbury could have the kick. Saw last week, uh, Salisbury had about 19 touches last week. Probably one of his most prolific games at senior level. Starting to feel his way into it after coming through the Tassie Devils program. Six inside, 50 to three, the Bombers way. Yeah, so it's just going to be like that sort of rugby game tonight where they just gain yards. They've got to make the most of these kicks. Another left footer, Blade Sulzberger. He's going to break the 50, kick towards the Invermay Park end of the ground. Looking for the first goal of this evening. It looks pretty good. It looks real good. It looks really good, Blade Sulzberger. Accurate and strong. And Blade Sulzberger gets the first for North Launceston. That'll give him the confidence, Max. 1 2 8, lead Launceston 0 2 2. Yep, real good kick there too and uh, a good confidence boost for, for young Blade Sulzberger and North have uh, been the more dominant side in this first 11 and a half minutes. Um, early on that first five minutes their tackling was red hot. Um, Launceston were being led to the ball. There was a little bit of a stanza there that we got the ball down here and Hines and a couple of others had shots for Launceston but couldn't convert and uh, North are making the most of all their forward thrusts at the moment. Back in the centre, umpire throws the ball up. McCormack goes against Lee. Lee wins a tap to Stingle. Falls now back to McCormack. Nice little handball. Kick out of the centre is a clearance for Launceston. Musica hands now to Furlow. Sideways little chip. Look at the Casey Brown. He's got it right half forward. Deep penetrating kick inside 50. Burling from behind takes him up. Now did he push his opponent out? He did. So free kick, Connor Leafland. Looks to switch. Does it okay? Mark in the back pocket. Fletcher Bennett. Handball over the top to Hubbard. Hubbard might get it back to Benny. Does it very nicely, does Ethan Hubbard. Then delivers the kick to Sulzberger, the goal kicker. He's off and running. Defensive 50. Down the wing. High kick. Off hands out of bounds. A few times they've gone that way, Max. Just trying to get the ball close to the uh, boundary. Reset. Get that stoppage ascendancy again and go doesn't suit them though they've got so many left footers when they get <laughs> running out that way they can only kick one direction towards the boundary and a few times even with that one it was just too deep towards the boundary the kick you know they'd be better off to switching it this way no, i reckon they're happy side. with it i reckon they're happy yeah. with it i reckon they're at this stage of the game they know that if they take a risk that might come back the other way i reckon they're happy with these stoppages with alex lee dominant in the ruck here's another one down the front not going far though what are the uh, stoppage clearances there for Dave Gruber, please, Dave? Yeah, we've got uh, clearances of a 5-3 to three at the moment, Northern Bombers way, inside 56-5. to five. Okay, so a little bit of North Launceston's way at the moment. Umpire says another free kick. Of course, we saw a, uh, an abundance of free kicks here last Sunday, Max, in the AFL game, that is. I think it was 63. Interesting that we see that as a lot of free kicks, but they were saying back in the 90s and 80s that there was 80-odd free kicks a game. Most since 2012 or something. Yeah, like but was. imagine what it was like when they had 80 free kicks a game with sometimes only one or two umpires. So it's a different uh, era of footy. We worry about 63. And it's going to be a free kick on backward centre wing for Alec Wright. So as was mentioned, went to the North Melbourne for a week. Ended up with a bit of a, a corky or something, I think. Missed a week at TSL level. Back now, straight down the middle, Alec Wright. Over towards Fletcher Bennett, playing that defensive role. Leaf Lang takes it, tackled with the ball. It's uh, ferocious tackling at the moment. And as soon as they get out, it comes back into another stoppage. Three kicks, seven to North Launceston, four to Launceston so far. Yeah, lots of kicks, lots of stoppages. Down the front, Alex Lee. Set a corridor. They're slipping and sliding around here at Utah Stadium. These night games this time of year, Max, a little bit problematic. Great for the crowd. They like coming out on a Friday night. Especially here at uh, Utah Stadium. Of course, Max has got one eye on the AFL later on. We'll bring in the scores. Richmond up against Sydney. Swans up in Sydney. Rob Sauer down on the boundary will be keen for those scores as well. Both Mad Tiger supporters. Free kick. Bradley Cox, good job. Here he comes, Max. Swings it along. No, 50. 50. 50. 50 maybe against Gillow. Moving yeah. on the mark. 
So they did look to go on that stage when they could swing it across. He'll kick this. He'll kick this from inside 50. And uh, he might be far away with that cannon of a left foot. We've seen it for close to, what, more than a decade now here at North Launceston. And Bradley Cox, good job. Looking for North Launceston second. Get them off to a commanding start. Towards Invermay Park. Deliberate approach. Leans back. It's got the distance, but not the accuracy. Geez, that would have been a nice one. One goal, 3 9, North Launceston. Launceston, 0 2 2. 16 minutes gone here, round 10 TSL action. Friday night footy is Dave Moore. Lee runs his full measure. Measures the kick now to Harper, who's been quiet so far, J.B. Harper. Now on the mark on defensive 50. Looking around for options. Handball now to right. Steaming past. Kicks to the wing. Nicely weighted kick. Not even breaking stride there was Tuttle. Drops the mark. And he gets it to Seymour. Seymour now to Gillo. Has to dive for the mark. Can't take it. And it's out of bounds. So they transferred the ball there from half back to attacking 50. From full back to attacking 50. And uh, they can launch an attack here. It's 9 to 2 at the moment, the score. He's just tuned in. Quite healthy numbers on the stream as well. Enjoying Friday night footy. Got a holding free kick. It's going to go the way of the Northern Bombers in the ruck contest. And the beneficiary will be their veteran ruckman Alex Lee. He's going to get a handoff for sure here to Bales. Here he comes. Bales now to the wing. Not a great kick. Turnover. Music out. Fumbles. Tackled by Sulzberger. Loose ball. Out it comes now to right. He's had a fair bit of it in the first quarter. Little kick. Finds Paul Freeman on the boundary line. He's in career best form as Brody Porfman. He goes now inside 50. Who can take a big grab? Hines is there. Hands to it. Can't take it. Lovely handball over the top. Lee Flang did well. They're going to hand in to spoil it away. Contested ball. Harper, don't argue. Gets free. Left foot. JB Harper kicks to the goal square. Fumble. Snap for goal by Taylor. He's offline. So they haven't uh, been able to score their first major as yet, the Blues. They're three behinds. North Fonsett's a 139. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas. For your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 131 161. Here's Matthew McGee for City Park Radio. Kick in. Declan Chug. Goes that far wing side. Close to the boundary again. They high and they rise. What a mark there at the moment. From North Launceston. It's Tom Bennett, I think. It is. We saw him take 10 marks last week. None more spectacular than that one, Tom Bennett. He rose, Ooh. but he's turned it over at this stage. Avent cleans up the work. Held in the tackle now. Comes back towards the boundary line over Alex Lee's head. Back towards Bennett. And it goes out of bounds. That was a nice little hang early. Good Harley contest, Tim Alec Wright and um, Tom Bennett. Harley Gillow took a beauty last week. It was. KG5. I saw that on the highlights yep. late in the game, but it was a terrific rise. So, boundary throw in. Kilo's there on this occasion. Harper does the ruck work. Musica, explosive, powerful. Musica, good effort. Connor Leaflang got the left hand punch in defensively. Off the ground. Holferman, good hands. Tackled. Seymour dropped it like an egg. The umpire says you have, and that's going to be a free kick right in the defensive pocket. They're doing well on the defensive side here, North Launceston Maxwell. They certainly are. Defence is uh, holding up really well. Blade Sulzberger has kicked the only goal of the game so far. Kicked that uh, at about the 11 minute mark of the quarter. He kicks up the wing. In the contest, Harper drops the mark and slides over the boundary line. So a lot of players have been on that side of the ground. There's been no breeze to speak of. But uh, when Northern Bombers have been clearing, they've gone to that, in, that uh, railway wing side each and every time. So a lot of the players have been over on that side. Lee with a big tap. Gains about 20 metres his way. It's on the wing. Manchanan overruns it. Coming out to meet it there was Bennett. Spills off hands out of bounds. So they gain territory though. Right in front of a little group of patrons over there on the, the far side. Scores 1-3-9 Northern Bombers. Launceston three behinds, three points. Been playing 20 minutes. Front of the contest, man. Shannon's got it. Let's it go straight away. And gets held, so he'll get a free kick. Will Man Shannon. Chance to launch something here for the Northern Bombers. 
Inside 50s are leaving up now. There's seven apiece. Manchandon. Shallow entry here. Oh, big fly there from Pierce. No mark taken. Little kick out. Lux of Fortune. Finds Paul Freeman. He's looking for a handball option. He's got one now in Gillo. Gillo kicks. Here looking for Hines. Now Kervitz ream like a glove. And he gets the uh, left fist on it. Knocks it out of bounds. Good contest that one, Max. It is. And I don't think they'll be too far away from each other all, all day tonight. Uh, all day tonight. Yeah, all day tonight. All day tonight. We might be here. Today all... tonight. Is that today tonight. to be a TV show? Yeah, it did. It? Still is, isn't it? <laughs> Was that on Benny's channel or not? Boundary throw in. Yes, big anniversary of Benny's channel. 60 years. Congratulations. It Kick is Benny's now channel too. Casey Brown to half forward. Taylor with the handball. Oh, Hines there was met heavily. Gets a high tackle. Help without it, whatever you like. He gets up gingerly holding his head. And then Curvis, few afters. Yep. So it'll be a shot on goal here for Jake Hines. He's okay. He's putting the Guernsey up to the nose. A bit of claret there. But uh, still a few push and shoves there. Bit from Chug involved. Back on play, Jake Hines directly in front. Now Curvis on the mark is 40 out. Chance to level the scores here. Time on first quarter. Jake Hines kicking to the town end. Wheels around, launches, oh. and misses as well. Tell you what, Nan Curvis went straight through him too a little bit there on one occasion. Looks like uh, Chug's got Tyrrell tonight. So another big job for the youngster in deck on Chug. North Launceston 9, Launceston 4. Of course, uh, Tyrrell would have kicked the other week. Foz 10. Yep. It's a lazy 10 after he had a kick all year. Went forward, kicked 10. Stayed stayed forward. And uh, Declan Chuck's got the job tonight. He's got the ball now, Declan Chuck. Goes towards the boundary. Oh, another good good hang there from Bennett. Can't take it on this occasion. Cox Goodja down the front. Moves it slickly. Goes to uh, Avent. Spill. Turnover. Boy. Looks for Morris. Can't take it. Centre of the ground. They're away north. Launceston. If they can get it, they've got some wheels through Rickard. Inside 50, Pierce over the top with Woolley. The two big fellas, they go at it. Pierce falls over. Woolley keeps his feet. Max says, you've got to keep your feet, Jake Pierce. Centre wing, Gillow, left foot, Silky. It's gone from one end to the other. All of a sudden, the game's open, opened up with a couple of turnovers. They now wheel and go. Launceston. Inside 50, Brendan Taylor. Then Curvis. Probably should have spilt, uh, taken that what he spilt. Harper's there as well. Seymour, head over the footy. Spilled it, Launceston. That was uh, Zach Morris, didn't take it. And there it is, it's all over. And there goes that one good bit of play for the night. <laughs> Max up and down the ground, and it goes back to another stoppage. Yeah, the good, great one-on-one -on -one there with Pierce and Woolley, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was good. Woolley kept his feet, that was simple. And I have to correct you, Macca, it doesn't happen very often. I know you, you don't make many mistakes. Two weeks in a row, you've called Nathan Pierce Jake Pierce. Oh, well, that's so, right. So, Jake so. Pierce had a great career at, uh, I'm going to write in your book here, Nathan. Well, Nathan probably Nathan. wants to afford you own career. He's Brennan Taylor Pierce. now for goal, and he's going to score the first goal of the night for Launceston. Brennan Taylor. Opportunists, he's been in good form. He's kicked a couple of uh, nice bags of goals, and there's a bit of afters here too on the fourth flank. It's good. Burling involved. Jacob Kerr, but uh, Brennan Taylor... Has put the Blues in front, 1-4-10 to North Launceston, 1-3-9. So a bit of heat in the contest. Brendan Taylor, good goals uh, the last few weeks as well. He might have kicked five last week against... Uh, four, I think. Four or it, five, yeah. yeah, against Glenorchy. We and said um, it a couple of years ago, didn't we, or last year. His role is the full forward defensive pressure, and if they can get one or two goals out of him, he's holding his spot each week. That's right. You listen to City Park Radio 103.7 and 96.5. And via the TSL live stream, sponsored by Daily Potato Co. Back in the centre, clearance here from Stingle. Can Cox Goodger run on it? He can. Can he launch for goal from 50? Brad Cox Goodger, is it coming round? Not quite enough. Explosive play out of the middle there. Stingle and Cox Goodger involved. 1 4 10 apiece. He was just conscious there that if he carried it another one or two metres, he was probably gone for. Yep. Running too far, he had to get rid of it. Just couldn't quite straighten up that last half a step, Foz. Tight contest. Dying minutes now this quarter. one for 10 apiece. Paul Freeman's got it. Deep in defence. 
Take his time. We'll go sideways to Boyd. He marks just inside the boundary. Still inside defence of 50. Chip over the top to Harper. Probably won't run on. Just takes his time. 25 and a half minutes gone. Harper now up the wing. High kick. In the contest is Musica from behind. Big fist there from Morris. Sees the ball out of play. Bit of feeling out there at the moment, Dave. Yep. A lot of push and shoving. Yep. Probably wouldn't uh, be a game between these two without a bit of feeling. There always has been and always will be between the uh, city rivals on a big night and a big game. Now he's throwing. Flat one. Taken by Harper. Little kick. Lockie Mitchell with the spoil. Slippery pill out there. Out of bounds right in front of the dugout. Ten apiece. 26 minutes gone. I think both sides just happy to play the quarter out now, Dave. A lot of numbers around the ball. Ives against McCormack. Music of Sharks. It gets a little kick away. Declan Chug does well. He's tackled from behind by Tyrrell. Releases the ball. Chance now with Gillo. Skillful handball from Brown now finds Jaden Hines. Torpedo towards half forward. Thumped away from the back. Here's Jackie Avent. Oh, and smothered there by Hines. Probably heard that on our effects, Mike. And eventually it spills out of bounds. It's rough and tough footy here at Utah Stadium. It's an old-fashioned game. Boundary throw in. 60 metres out from the Blues goal. Front position eyes. Gets it to Avent. Releases. On his far as Harper. He's got a releasing handball now to Jaden Hines. Centres the ball. Straight to Harry Bales. Who takes the mark at halfback. Harry Bales. Halfback flank. He really starts games well, Harry Bales, and then tends to fade out of it. It was really good early last week. Alex Lee tried to put the Dukes up. He was taken uh, as he went forward. No, it was Tom Bennett that was taken. Oh, she's on here in front. The Hines boys. Brothers Hines are going a little wheel man shanded. But keep an eye on the footy. You keep an eye on the fight, as they say, Max. Here's Stingle, centre wing. They still go. Bales this time. Jake Hines, Declan Judge. The umpire's going to stop the game here at the moment. The umpire's run 70 metres. The officiating umpire, that is. And he's just going to say, well, we're going to ball it up, or is it going to be a free kick to North? They've lost control here, the boys. Free kick played Salisbury just centre wing. So, always good battles. Always really good battles. These North Launceston, Launceston derbies. Inside 50. There's the dangerous Newitt. He's got a big contest tonight. Inside 50. Oh, not a great kick. Not a great kick at all there. From James Leake. James Leake. Uh, sorry, from Mitchell. Yep. Now James Leake's got the ball for you. One in front of me. Sorry. James Leake. Back pocket. Over the top. Taylor. Good on these nights. And there's the siren. Well, an entertaining contest. Didn't re reach a real lot of great levels in the conditions. But it's 1-4-10 apiece. And there's been plenty of fire in the game. I reckon I can do the goal kickers, Max. Brendan Taylor with one and Blade Salisbury with one. Yep, doesn't get any easier than that, does it, Mecca? For one a quarter, one one per team per quarter. So uh, yeah, bit of feeling out there. It was noticeable right from the very beginning with the aggression that North were and are still on in the middle now. Oh, look out! Here we go, number five for Launceston and went straight at him, Jack Tuddle. Jack Tuddle's gone. At, uh, you are the man who started this. We've got a melee. Well and truly a melee. Dominic, um, Damien Gill's coffers are just getting filled. As long as they take the money off them, there's no good... Pretending, you reckon? No. A bit of fantasy money. If you're going to find someone, take Benny, the money off them. If our boy Benny can get it really in the shot, I think he takes a cut, Benny Donaldson. Yeah, he's going to need a wide camera because it's uh, on in a few places. It's split along. Isaac knew it's out of it. He knows that he's probably not real big. So, yeah, a fiery first quarter. The players are finally separating. Rob will be down there in amongst it. Reporting on... Uh, Where is Roberto? Is no. he? Oh, no, he wasn't no, even here. He stayed, he stayed <laughs> behind there with Timmy Cocker. Even Timmy knew what was going on. All right, we want to take a short break here while the boys collect their thoughts and we'll come back and analyse the first quarter and have the stats and set the scene for quarter number two. At quarter time, it's 1-4-10 apiece here at Utah Stadium. 
We all love Launceston City Park Radio, your local radio station. If you support City Park Radio through a membership in 2022, Elgas would like to say thank you. And as a way of saying thanks, we'll take $10 off your next LPG delivery. That's right, if you have an account with Elgas, your next LPG delivery will receive $10 off if you have a 2022 membership of Launceston City Park Radio. From the smallest domestic to the largest commercial, phone your local LPG experts on 131 161 for full details. Terms and conditions apply. Elgas is a sponsor of City Park Radio. Radio is available on many platforms and podcasting is one of them. City Park Radio has established a community podcast corner so individuals and groups can use our quality studio to record their very own podcast series. Whether you're a group of good friends, a club or a professional looking for facilities, City Park Radio can help you. Contact the station on 6334-3344 and we'll get the information to you. Putting the community into radio. City Park Radio. Thinking Tasmania. Think Tassie Tyres and Mechanical. Our range is as diverse as the Tasmanian terrain. And our tyres are selected and tested for Tasmanian roads and conditions. From daily driving or highway touring to adventuring off-road. Thinking about quality and value for money. Think Tassie Tyres. Proudly Tasmanian owned and operated. We won't be beaten on price and offer sick money and afterpay. Conditions apply. Tassie Tyres and Mechanical. Hobart Road, Kings Meadows. A sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Back here at Utah Stadium, it's one goal, four ten apiece. I'll tell you what it's great to see when uh, during COVID this sort of thing wasn't allowed, but uh, all the kids are back on the ground kicking the footy at half time, quarter time. So it's good to see a good tradition in the game. A few things to get through. Uh, at the start, I didn't mention the D League score. Oh, this what a yeah, game! What Foster. a game it was. Yeah, 10 9 69 Launceston, 9 10 64 North Launceston with Cooper Warren lining up and converting a goal right on the siren or after the siren went. So uh, a great contest. And uh, Launceston on top for most of the day. North Launceston got in front by a point and just couldn't hold on. So great contest there. Groups of stats to quarter time. Uh, hit outs, North Launceston 15 to Launceston 7. Uh, clearance is pretty even. 8 to the Bombers, 7 to the Blues. Inside 50 is also pretty even. 11 to 9 uh, the Bombers way. Just a one mark inside 50. Probably a testament to the conditions tonight, but slippery. But just one mark inside 50 for each team. Free kicks, 11 to Northern Bombers, 6 to Launceston. So uh, both teams now in their area huddles uh, out there, and they'll gather together in a moment with uh, their respective coaches. Maxie, how did you see the first quarter? Pretty yeah, tight? Very tight. Uh, very tight, Dave. Look, North started really well, as I said earlier. Uh, Launceston took a little bit of ascendancy without putting the pressure on the scoreboard there for a good 10 minutes of that game. But what I have been impressed with is North Launceston so far, Pierce has maybe touched it once or twice deep. Um, Tommy Bennett's had the lead right up to the wing to get his possessions. Like, and now they're two key forwards, and yet they're still, you know, well and truly in the game. Um, if they can sit back and control the, the deep forward forward 50 closer to the goal square a little bit, because North's getting it in multiple times, uh, heaps and heaps and heaps. Getting them on the rebound, Max, they aren't are. they? They're actually they showing them with yep. pace and clean hands with Avent, and in particular Cox Goodger, yep. and also um, the youngsters in Hubbard, with a bit of pace there through the midfield, they're actually going. Yeah, Stingley, they are. of course. Yep. So, like, plenty of plenty of pressure as well. Like, you know, the the old North Launceston style. There's still a little bit of it in there. Um, every game you see, they like that ruggedness. Um, Launceston probably got the more mature bodies, so that that'll be really interesting as the game gets on. Yep. And you've got to think a bit quicker, a bit smarter. These all all the Premiership players at the Launceston club, not as many at North Launceston anymore. They've, they've had a big list turn over the last two, three, four years, but uh, yeah, we've got a game on our hands here, and if it continues the way it's going, I can feel a little bit of an upset. Oh, here we go, Maxwell. Okay. Well, we've, got some just, we've got lots of viewers tonight, but Benny, a couple were disgruntled, mate, that the overlay sat over the scrap <laughs> at the quarter time, the overlay, the score overlay. No, I saw can Benny, you do something Benny, about that? No, Benny can't Benny, control Benny's that. Benny's the best in the business here, we know, with the camera. He can't control but, that. Uh, he can't, is that Groobs? No, Groobs no, do the no. overlay? <laughs> Jeez, we better get what. down to Rob Sauer because play's not far away from starting. Rob, uh, what uh, huddle did you go to at uh, quarter time there? Well, I'm on double time tonight. I'll tell you yep. what, the Boundary Riders Union, we're going to have a chat <laughs> covering both huddles tonight. I've put the screw-ins in the Stan Smiths and I'm, I'm scorching it up. Look, plenty to share from both huddles. Uh, Mitch thought not very pleased with the long system huddle. They're playing too skinny. He wants them to stretch and uh, stretch the ground. 
make, make it bigger and uh, make the Bombers players work harder. Listening to Brad Cox, could you? Brad, uh, very, very happy around the stoppages, but just demanding a bit more for them with how they use the ball. So, um, you know, contrasting messages there from both coaches. Very, very tight start. And as you said, uh, very spiteful into the quarter, guys. Uh, Rob, uh, conditions down there obviously a bit slippery? Very slippery, and it's going to get worse because there's no cloud cover. So this dude is just going to get worse as the um, evening goes on, guys. Any so injuries from that first quarter play? No, both sides are uh, OK. No problems at all. Cheers, Rob. We'll get back to you uh, during the quarter. Thanks, guys. He's mentioned his Stan Smiths twice tonight. I reckon he's after a new pair. If there's anyone from out of there south, they'd like to give him a new pair of Stan Smiths. So, uh, look, I'm really looking forward to this quarter, Max. Uh, it's tight. Maybe six goals wins the contest. Maybe seven if you're lucky as players get to get to start to get tired. But I love the scraps. I love the fire. I love the old rivalry. I love these boys putting their body on the line and getting up at each other's noses. It's brilliant. McCormack, Lee, dominant again. Down the front, Cox Goodja off the deck. Liverpool style. Here's a don't argue from Joby, Joby Harper. Goes out to centre wing. Palfreyman up and under. Alex Lee covering pl plenty of territory. Here's Cox Goodja patrolling on the left. He comes down the front. Bennett sets again. Here's at the bottom of the pack here at the moment. It's uh, Launceston, they're scrapping with North Launceston. He turns on a 20 cent piece to Stingle. Hit up and finds Bennett. Well, it's a good start. Another set of clearance for Dave Gruber. Another inside 50 North Launceston. And it's got to uh, start to take an effect, doesn't it, Max? You mentioned the first quarter. That makes Lee dominant. He's hitting it wherever he wants. Yep, he certainly is. And good vision then by a young Stingle. Um, he's only got one side of the body. They should know that he's always going to swing around onto that left foot and, uh, and look for someone, and he normally hits the target. Tom Bennett, kick 13 for the season. This is for number 14, really important. Tom Bennett, he wheels it in. I think he's got it. He does, Tom Bennett. He was holding it on the side like Fozzie Moore's uh, driver off the first, but it's snuck in near uh, far post, and Tom Bennett goes to number 14 for the season. And two for North Launceston, Max Walker. Yep, and that's what we spoke about at quarter time. If you can get the ball into Bennett and Pierce, uh, Theo Ives, he showed in the first quarter, what, you know, one inside 50 grab in the first quarter, and he was the only bloke who got it. So, uh, really good start uh, to this quarter for North Launceston again. Okay, so real contest, real contrast to the first time they met on Good Friday, but of course we know there was no Cox Goodger. Uh, Stingle uh, event in that occasion so they've made a big difference here this evening as Lee wins the tap in towards Stingle, he taps it on Van Shan and a little fumble Van Dam, sideways handball towards Stingle, he's bumped off it by Harper back onto to Stingle, tackled by Harper ball goes free Harper, nice handball to Brown here they go now the Blues with Fletcher Seymour, inside 50 and Curvis is there up against Thurlow now, Thurlow to Hines Hines to Paul Freeman Ball from the top to Gillow, all by hand. Ends up with music. Ah, right foot, check side, goal. Great play by the Blues. They didn't panic at any stage. They just waited till they got a player free. And that player was Michael Musica. And we've had two goals in a minute. After two goals in one quarter. And it's now 2-4-16 apiece. I watched that pretty closely, Max, because young Connor Leaflang is now manned up on Hines, Jake Hines. And, uh, you know, they were one out down there, and he did a pretty good job, but they just needed that third man up, uh, North Launceston. Didn't get it, and Launceston provided the overlap. They did. And it just started back on the wing with the Jody Harper tackle on Stingle. Yep. You know, kick uh, by Taylor, I think it was forward. Then there was three or four handballs in succession, and over to Musica, who uh, he could kick those with his eyes shut. Yeah, little check side banana. The music, Alex Lee, dominant ruck it out again, but only as far as Seymour. Just sitting behind defensive ruckman at the moment is Seymour. Here's Jackie Avent. Try to take a couple of bites of the cherry. Casey Brown just worries him out of it. He's done well, Casey Brown. He goes back again. Can't get the handball. Might be caught. Umpire says, no, you've done enough. Give it to me right on centre wing over on the railway wing side of the ground. So entertaining game, although low scoring. 2-4-16 apiece. You're listening to City Park Radio 103.7, 96.5. Good, good get, man. Shandon copped a little bit of treatment there just before quarter time. A little ear massage on the boundary. But we even had a rearrangement of the haircut, I think. Will Man Shandon sits on him. Gone, holding the footy. It's going to be a long distance kick. It's going to go to Polferman. So Polferman, you know him well, Max. He's in terrific form, the Polferman. 
He is already won a best and fairest down there yeah. like three years ago. You'd have to uh, say he lost a bit, didn't he, there for a couple of years. And uh, especially last year, maybe. Probably a little bit harsh for two years, but last year wasn't his best. He's uh, Man Shandon out of the pack. Left foot, hit up, good kick. Good kick. North Launceston take a mark through Theo Ives. Oh, he tries to step inside. Drops the football. Went to kick it. Missed it. Here's Pierce. He turns the big bustling Pierce. Left foot snap. It's going to be the bounce. It's going to be the bounce. It's a good bounce. It's a great bounce. It's a great bounce, Nathan Pierce. And he kicks uh, North Launceston's third. Floodgates are open for us. Oh, sorry, they haven't been throwing the, the bike turn the off. Yeah, thrown to the bus. But no, it's a bit uh, by Nathan Pierce. He, he's, he played a bit on the ball, but this season actually seems to be playing a bit more inside that attacking 50. Yeah, well, they probably they put Stingle inside yep. inside mid at the moment. Uh, and they need someone down there to help Tom Bennett. They needs to someone who's got a bit of strength and uh, will fight really hard to keep the ball in when it's on the ground, which Nathan Pierce does very well and very regularly. Three goals in five minutes in this second quarter and Northern Bombers out by six up it goes McCormack might have won that one but Sharky was a vent to Stingle gee they're doing well out of the centre at the moment to Lee to a vent once again they've worked it out pretty well now they need the kick inside 50 here it is setting himself for the mark Newitt takes it and he plays on and he goes no he doesn't offline I thought he might have got him to take the shot there the young man was on adrenaline and he went uh, straight on and had a shot pretty quickly and just scored a behind. 3-5-23 to Launceston 2-4-16. Ball's out of bounds from the kick in. Only a little criticism of young Newitt. Sometimes he gets himself a little bit far under the ball. He got away with that time. He got the hand on it first time around. Normally stretches pretty well. Yep. Normally has a pretty good stretch under that footy. But, uh, Boundary throwing. Well. McCormack. Aven again. Kicks it inside 50. Contest Bennett. Getting back was House. And there's been a holding free kick. I think it's going to go the Blues way. And we'll come back here to uh, Woolley. Now he heads over to House. Now he gets it to Woolley. Out of defence. Good first quarter. Josh Woolley. Half back flat now taken by Bennett. He can't release it. And it'll be a ball up right half forward. So, good start to this quarter. As we said, three goals kicked in uh, just five minutes. Taken here by Thurlow. Harper, sorry. And he kicks it uh, towards the wing to Thurlow. He knocks it out of play. So, a few interchanges being made with the ball on this side of the ground. Cox, could you back on? Young boundary umpire. About to hurl it back in. Does so now. Ball's a little bit short. Taken by Music, it tackled straight away. McCormack picks it up, slings the kick. Avent gets in the way. Cox Goodja tackled without it. And it's what the umpire said, no, it's a throw. So it's going to go to Joby Harper. North crowd not real happy with that one. Harper in here towards Hines. Can't take the mark. From the spillage, Declan Chugs there. Traces it towards the boundary line. He's got it now. As Declan Chug taps it in front of him, does really well. Good work, Declan Chug. Up the wing. Taken by Jamison House. Shrugs the tackle. Sideways handball to Jaden Hines. Round the corner. Bouncing ball. Chaos. Kerr got his hand to it. Bennett. Gets it back to Lee Flang. Great handball now to Kerr. Jacob Kerr. Little left foot kicks. Pretty good. Mark taken by Ahern. Ahern. One of the youngsters from up the coast. Steps on the outside, another left footer. So it's fitting well to this North Launceston lineup. Finds Pierce. Goal kicker. Pierce, umpire. Oh, I heard there was a whistle, but there wasn't. He just said play on. And gives it to Sulzberger. Another goal kicker. Sulzberger. Oh, fumble inside to Rickard. Now he's giving away a free kick, has he? Umpire says no. Got away with it. Give it to me. That was a bit sloppy. It was. I think he uh, spent it before he had it there, Macca. Had yes. a couple of metres on his opponent, running towards goal, and uh, his eyes lit up a little bit. Harper. Makeshift Ruckman. Down to Palfreman. Handball back to Harper. Up the line. Bustling there. Three on three. Ball goes out of bounds. Just in front of the scoreboard area. 
3-5-23 North Launceston. Launceston 2-4-16 being challenged. They go into tonight's clash 7-1 to Launceston. 275%. Not going to make too many grounds on that one tonight. It's a, uh, it's a really still night. There's no wind. No cloud, as Rob said. Hence a little bit of dew on the ground. It's a great night for footy. The umpire says uh, throw it in. Bring you all the AFL scores. Max is getting a little bit restless. <laughs> just to see how the Tigers are going. Not quite started yet, Max. Yes, they have. I'll fast forward. Here we go. This is the best part. Boundary throw in. Not much happening here at Utahs. Alex Lee. Say that a bit tonight. Ball comes down the front. Handball. Jaden Hines. Up and under kick. Standing his ground. Well done there, Lonces. And that's Thurlow. Comes out the back. Holferman. Racking them up now. Bennett. Out the back. Handball. Up the line. Setting himself is Pearson right. Who's going to be first to react? It's uh, Launceston. Pierce tries to arch the back. And he does so. Gets it inside. 50. Bennett can't quite get his hands to it. Josh Woolley. He's going to be away. Josh Woolley off half back. Woolley. Lovely kick. Finds Seymour. And it was uh, the new player, Caleb Thomas, who got the, the handball away then. So featuring the play. He's been at a few clubs. He played with North Lonnie 2017 at one stage. A second stint at the Bombers. Seymour's kick is poor. It's marked or out of bounds in the full there to Brad Cox Goodjet. Chance to launch here for the Bombers. Here he goes, Cox Goodja. Low kick to attacking 50. Seymour in the way. Handball not effective. He gets it back, Seymour. Tackled by a couple of Bombers. Can't escape. So after a flurry of goals at the start of the quarter, it's become a little bit down in the last couple of minutes. And uh, the Bombers lead by seven points. It'll be a low-scoring game. A little kick forward by Lee. Trapping it there was right. Coming through Manshandon. Picks it up now, Manshandon. Smart kick towards Rickard. Can't take the mark. Player tackled straight away by Seymour. That was Sulzberger. So dangerous spot here for the Blues. It's only about 30 out from their goal. North Launceston, that is. Seymour's tackled by Sulzberger. Secondary ball up. So inside 50s for Dave Gruber this quarter. Six to North Launceston. And three to Launceston. So they've had most of the opportunities. Kick two goals to one. Coming through is Cox Goodja. He gets the high free kick as he does. He came through. Jake Smith with the hand over the shoulder. So it will be a shot on goal for Cox Goodja. There's an angle involved, but uh, for Cox Goodja. Probably relatively straightforward. Only 30 out. This just a lengthen the lead out to 13 points, which is significant on a night such as this. Bradley Cox, good job. Kicks for goal. Across the face. He's missed a couple tonight. And this is another. 3 6 24. The Bombers launch it in 2 4 16. As that comes out from fullback, marked by Harper. Woolley. He's an excellent kick even in these conditions. Finds Harper. Harper goes right away, wing side of the ground. Cut off. Well done there, North Launceston through Alex Lee. He stuck the mid out. He punches it back on again. Musica. Not a great kick because only standing there is Stingle. Center wing. They're away. Inside now on the 45 is Rickard. Rickard hit up Bennett. Oh, they're slipping everywhere, the players at the moment. He's knew it. He's caught holding the footy. Good tackle. He's tried a little bit too much in the conditions. He's going to be taken by Jado Hines. Hines. Hit up finds Polferman. He's got Boyd on the outside. Trying to control the footy a little bit more now. Launceston. Gets him on the 45. Here's Harper. He's away on the other side. Is Jake Smith. Cox Goodger works hard. Can't get there. Jake Smith. Was he spotted something? That's right. Smith, inside 50, Stingle's got a fly, punches it through, does it? Here's uh, Jake Hines on the corner. Oh, that's oh. a terrific goal. Oh. Jake Hines from in front of the scoreboard, just nonchalantly on the one step and puts it through. 
for Launceston's goal. And that's a, an amazing goal of the day. Jake Hines. That will be in the day the goal of the, uh, the week competition, no doubt. Well, he didn't even run up, Max. He just stood there and spun around. And no one really knew it was going to go through. Apart from him, who had a great line of it. Oh, great goal. Anthony Osborne make a note. 14 minutes into the second quarter for that one. That's a fantastic goal. He's been known to do that. Uh, seen that at Windsor Park a number of times, Max. Yeah, it's just about his goal sense, isn't it? Uh, and a lot of his kicks, even uh, field, field set shots, are only off a couple of steps as well. Like he just punches the ball hard, which he did on that one. He's got a little swagger up tonight, doesn't he, Jake Hines? You can just see it. Two he points. loves these battles. Two points of margin. Away we go again. Player three out of the way was Harper without the ball. So he's coming into the game, JB Harper. He loves games such as this, these high-pressure games. North just need to steady a little bit here and uh, get their composure back and kick another one to just sort of stay on top here, guys. Tartill. He might have been held in the jumper there by Pierce. It's uh, taken out of bounds. Yeah, I agree with you, Max. You can you can tell that that last five minutes, I think I've called it, Launceston is starting to make better decisions with the footy, a bit cleaner, starting to get that possession game going. And as you said, North Launceston now need to respond. 15 minutes gone, second quarter. We'll be joined at halftime by Devils coach Jeremy Webberley. The game here tomorrow uh, against the Eastern Rangers for the Tassie Devils. Stingle and Seymour. Off the ground by Stingle. That might be kicking in danger as uh, Jaden Hines had his arm over the ball. So he's going to come back. So just a good little period here for Launceston. As Max said, they're going to need to steady here, the Northern Bombers. As Launceston can pile on goals in a hurry. Here's Jake Hines. Couldn't quite take the mark. Barreling through there was Harper. Comes out. Tyrrell. Sideways handball. Cox Goodger mops up. His kick smothered though. A little kick there by Dan Curvis is good to man Shannon. Spills a mark he probably should have taken. Tackle late on Casey Brown. Now Lee. And the umpire's picked out a free kick. It's going to go back to Alex Lee. Inside 50s for Dave Gruber this quarter. Uh, six to five North Foxton Way. So even game as we see on the scoreboard. So two points of difference. Alex Lee. Going to go along up the line here. High kick. Jamison House in a wrestle there with Bennett. Tuddle couldn't take the mark. Oh. Running into a brick wall there was Josh Rickard. Into a big bear hug. Out it comes. Taken by Jake Smith. Smart handball to Tuddle in close. Now to Poffman. Tries to weave his way through. Releases the handball to Jamison House on the left. Up towards half four. Big spoil Fletcher Bennett. Here's Stingle. Can he pick it up? Ball eludes him. Gets it now. Long handball. They've got a few numbers here. And Shannon gets one high from Musica. Who uh, fesses up to it. And Shannon takes the free kick, defensive side of the wing. No injury behind play there, might be Fletcher Bennett. Pulled up really sore. And Shandon, centre wing, good use of the footing. Cox, good job. He's been set upon by Jamison House. And Jamison House was the owner of that big bear hug I mentioned before. And they he hit uh, his opponent hard in that bear hug, front on. Unlucky not to get a free kick there, uh, Cox, good job. Too high under. or holding him as he went down. Also, a coat hanger on Man Shandon earlier, too. No ruck one for North Launceston. So Boyd takes it out of the ruck, finds Seymour. They're starting to go. Launceston have got to, and North Launceston have got to defend here. Hit up, lead. Good. Tyrrell missed the handball. Man Shandon tackles Seymour without it. Play on, Pierce. Another inside 50 just. And it falls in the hands of Tuddill. Tuddill swings it to his good mate in Boyd, centre wing. Here they go now, Launceston. Over the top to Palfreman to Tyrrell. They've got to hold them up. Over the top, well done. Good handball, quick handball to Alec Wright. Inside 50, look for Hines to set. He's at the bottom of the pack. He couldn't get up and it's going to go out of bounds. Ooh. Oh, geez, that's close. Josh up Rick had, yeah. gone. He, him. You could tell he wanted to do it and he couldn't. And Jake Smith is going to take the free kick for a deliberate out of bounds on Rickard. He was just probably two steps further away, yeah. wasn't he? Just made no effort to keep no, it in. That's no. that new rule, isn't it? Keep the, old, the ball moving. Old-fashioned defender just sees the boundary, but two steps too many. Here's a Jake Smith special round the corner. This is most things. Just stuck it in. Funny story. Uh, For a point. Yeah. Boundary line is uh, defender's best friend. Uh, yes. Sitting at the AFL game last week. Yes. Little dad and uh, son and father behind me. And yes. the father said, boundary line's never the... 
the uh, defender's best friend anymore, is it? No, the little no. boy looked at him and said, why were they friends? <laughs> Yeah, what a terrific game it was here last Sunday too. Good mark by Lee Flang on the far side. We'll get down to Rob in a minute for a report on Fletcher Bennett. As Lee Flang kicks towards the boundary line. We'll get down to you now, Rob. You've got a report there on Fletcher Bennett who came off. Yeah, thanks, guys. No, he's OK. Just shaking up a bit. Bit of a knock, bit of a drink, and he'll be back on in a sec. That's good news for Bombers fans. Geez, a tight contest. One point the difference. Good stuff here on a Friday night. To yourself, footy. Dave Moore, Max Walker. Matthew McGee, Dave Gruber, Rob Soward on at the boundary line. Here it comes now. Seymour's caught. Hands out of O'Hearn, who's been quiet. Gets the arms free. Short distance kick is smothered. Bales is in there, taking his Jaden Hines, who's been really good tonight. He kicks it up. Chance here for Lonsis, and they can't pick it up. Breaking out is Jacob Kerr with Dash. Into the forward line, a lot of one-on-ones here. Over the back, here's Pierce. Can he collect? He kicks it off the ground won't go through. In fact, it's just going to spill over for a bounty throwing for the Bombers. They look dangerous in that forward line, Max, when they get those one-on-ones and a quick transference. Yep, and there's there's that uh, you know deep entry again, which yep. made it really nervous for the for the Launceston Blues. One thing I'm noticing, once a guy gets a bit of speed up, you just can't change direction out there with the dew on the ground. Jamison House kicks it to Boyd, tries to get the handball away to Smith. He kicks it off the ground. They work it to defensive 50. Stingle, little tap didn't come off. Bailey Gillow there escapes from the tackle. Still on attacking 50 for the Bombers. They've done well here though, the Blues defence. Wright doesn't muck around. He kicks it off the ground. Nice pick up in the wet there by Dan Curvis though. To Stingle. Kick semi-smothered. Chance for a turnover. Good uh, work there by Casey Brown. But his kick smothered. No one getting an effective kick. Jacob Kirk can. He kicks it up towards attacking 50. Fist on it from Boyd. At the spillage chance. Right foot kick towards goal. Wants the player, gets a boot on it. Trying to pick that player up who had the shot on goal there. Caleb Thomas. Caleb Thomas, thanks, Maxi. Comes Check, out, out from defence. Keep you on a match-up here, Max. Uh, Fletcher Seymour might have gone a bit more defensive tag on Cox Goodyear, although he's wandering through the middle now. But definitely at stoppages, where they're just going head-to-head. We have seen Seymour do a couple of negative rolls in the past. He, he's uh, been influential so far, has Cox Goodger. Launceston through Taylor. They go to centre wing, reel up and under. Declan Chuck punches Tyrrell. Looking for the one over the back. He's got it. Chuck tries. Here's Hines. Hines, he's going to turn. He's already kicked the ripper of a goal. This one's going to go through for a behind. See you what, he creates some nerves up there that time for Lockie Mitchell. Young McFellow did well, though. Young yeah, Mitchell. pushed it through. A lot easier to mark, a lot easier to punch it through than uh, mark the footy, especially on a night like tonight. Mitchell, far wing. Alec Wright, one, two bites of the cherry, not quite. Here's Stingle, being good. Kerr, provided run. It hasn't fallen his way on this occasion. Harper, just swags those hips and goes out towards the boundary line. Burling, takes the mark, 50 out, too far. Calling for the footy long and deep. Jackson Thurlow. Sets, Jackson Thurlow, name written all over it, can't take it. Seymour, Hines, another one, will it bounce? It doesn't, it goes through, no it doesn't, they're still alive, a Launceston free kick. Oh, they got out of that one. Declan Chug. North Launceston, Declan Chug, tucked away in the back pocket. Oh gee, it's uh, really tight stuff here at the moment. We haven't had uh, more than about seven or eight points the margin all night. Closing in on half time, in a time on, 22, nearly 23 minutes gone. Big five from Lee. Over the back though, Jaden Hines, impressed with him tonight. Gets it a pole for him, an inside out kick, keeps it in towards Hines, gets his hands to it. He's up against two though, one of those Nan Kerbers. Needs to be careful there, Hines, with the tackle. In fact, he might have given away a free kick. No, no. bounty throwing. So, bounty throwing, 45 around from the Blues goal. Inside 50 is this quarter. We've got uh, about 10, 10 to 9. Bombers away, so really even. Ooh. Oh, is that a high tackle? No. Well, it's got so, to be out in the footy then. Maxie, you want to comment on that one? No, no, great tackle. He just bent the knees once he got tackled. Good decision by the umpire there. Ball up. Just outside attacking 50 for the Blues. They take possession through Seymour. High kick. Lands about 35 out. Almost a mark there. Gee, it was a Taylor. Spills to the Bombers, taken by Thurlow, quick snap on goal. Offline, one behind, and now scores a level here at Utah Stadium, 3-7, 25 apiece. It's 10 apiece at quarter time. 
Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Elgats for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 131 161. Here's Macca McGee. Goal apiece at the SCG. Sydney 117. Richmond 1 straight 6. Next, keeping a keen eye on both. Is that Ralph Smith, the one that came in? Uh, Max, he uh, played VFL curtain yes. raiser, Foz. He did. He played the VFL curtain raiser and got called in late. Did Hugo Ralph Smith and just kicked the first goal for Richmond. So, big night for the big fella. He's fresh. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Lee. He's warmed up. Lee, he's warmed up. My word, he's warmed up. Lee tumbles it forward. Forward spinning punt towards the boundary line. And just gaining territory. So 3 7 25 apiece. We saw plenty happening in the first quarter, especially off the ball. A little melee at quarter time. Players have both settled down now, both sides. Bit of a fog coming through, Fossil. Unless something big happens in the last couple of minutes, Brad Cox, good, you'd have to be happy with this situation. At oh, well, I think so, definitely. It's yeah. going to be a real challenge. Speaking of, Holferman tackles. No, could have been in the back very easily, but the umpire not getting sucked in said, give it to me, and I'll ball it up again. North Launceston is just constantly hitting the packs at speed. Yeah, here goes Lee, left hand hem, uh, left hand palm down. Another good tackle there, North Launceston through Blade Sulzberger. Yep. Another one. So what have we ticked over? 25 minutes. Yeah, there won't be much left. At Three, every seven, there's a North Launceston person on the move. Yeah. Uh, whereas Launceston are a lot more stagnant, which probably reflects on the rucking duel too. Speaking of on the move, here goes Thurlow from the clearance. They could do with one here. Launceston just to settle things down at half time. North Launceston are going to try and hang on. Top of the 50. Another stacks on the mill. Umpire says, give it to me. Great spoil then by Nan Curvis yeah. in that pack. That was just a, nearly a goal savings punch then. And then goes back and puts the glove on Jake Hines. So ball up, right on the 50, can't be long left in this first half. Seymour hits it at speed. Tyrrell, uh, Stingle, tackle, taken in the tackle, did he get a fist to it? Could have been anything, is that Morris? Yep. Is that Zach Morris special? Check side, inside out, Fossilmore. Yep. Well, you've given it to him? Yep. Zach Morris, another goal of the week. Jeez, we haven't seen much of Zach Morris tonight, but all he needed was that was that little look and he just put it on the boot on the other side of the boot and it goes through and that's the one we said that they would you could just tell they were going to get it they were going and they were going 4 7 31 launceston north launceston 3 7 25 max yeah they certainly uh they'd be disappointed that goal being kicked against them so deep into time on in the last in this in the uh last few minutes of this quarter um don't think they'll be too fussed with the scoreboard itself but they've had They've, they've managed to control the pressure against them right up until that uh, little quick kick by Morris. In the middle, a oh, beautiful tap out to Cox Goodger from Lee. He's pushed off his kick a little bit though. A good tackle there from Seymour. And uh, ends up with Jacob Boyd who takes a mark. Defensive side of the centre square. Picks about the handball to Woolley. And he's going to play a little bit of tempo footy. Play for the siren now. 27 minutes gone. Thurlow finds Seymour. So as Max said, some of these bigger bodies of Launceston, as the game goes on, could be a telling factor. Here's another one with Harper. Takes the mark, centre wing. Patient build up here from the Blues. Harper now goes towards half forward. Lovely kick it towards Thurlow. Takes a second grab mark. And uh, gets paid. So he's probably too far out to score. He's got uh, a spot up here. Looks like Jacob Boyd has drifted up. And takes the mark. He plays on, no one on the mark from 45, Boyd. And then he's offline. That would have been a really handy one for the Blues. They're out now by seven points. Might even be a game high lead, I think, for the, the Blues. Closing in on half time. 2 3 15, Sydney. They lead Richmond, one straight six. Max shaking the head. Bennett from fullback goes along. Is there one more chance here for the Northern Bombers? Offhand, spills to Van Dam. Slight fumble. That's it. That's half time. And uh, after a level ball game at quarter time, at half time, the Blues have taken a seven point lead. They lead 4 8 32 to North Launceston 3 7 25. So in that quarter, the Bombers kicked two goals, three. The Blues kicked three goals, four. Max, some thoughts before we uh, go back for some messages. 
Yeah, thanks, Dave. And uh, scoreboard shows what a few few points in it, and it reflects on the uh, the competition at the moment. Like neither side of being able to get that break that as that quarter went uh, on further yep. you could just see Launceston starting to get a bit more mo momentum um, started to get a bit more confidence bit cleaner in the air with the ball um, what they do need to do Alex Alex Lee's having a field day in the ruck um, and a few times we've seen it straight to a vent a vent straight to uh, Stingle in the middle Cox Goodger um, but Launceston have adjusted accordingly and, and sort of shut Cox Goodger down at the centre stoppages around the ground, though, is still very damaging, getting lots of the ball. And uh, it's just a matter of North would be happy with that half. Um, I reckon if we said three or four weeks ago you'll be you know, a goal behind it uh, against the Premiers at half time on Friday night, they'd take that every day of the week. But uh, still, listeners, viewers, we have got one contest on our hands here. I think we might have missed the goal kick at Seoul, Dawn, because Max had it. just forgotten. He's worried about the well, tie. Well, it's my fault. It's, it's, the tie. No, it's my fault. Singles, Brendan Taylor, Zach Morris, Michael Musica and Jake Hines for Launceston. And for North Launceston, Pierce, Bennett and Sulzberger. OK, good day. Groups of stats to half time. The hit outs 30 to 14. North Launceston's way, 15 to 7 in that quarter. So it was the same as the first quarter, 15 to 7. Uh, first and second quarters. Clearances, 18 to Northern Bombers, 16 to Launceston. Inside 50s. 21 to the Blues, 20 to the Northern Bombers. Marks inside 50s, three apiece. And free kicks, 16 to North Launceston, 13 to Launceston. So right down those stats, except for the hit outs, uh, the, uh, the stats are very even. We're going to take a short break here in City Park Radio. The score is 4 8 32, Launceston, North Launceston, 3 7 24. When we come back, we'll talk to Jeremy Webley, the coach of the Tasmania Devils. When it comes to your home or your local business, Elgas is the smart choice. Make the switch and be rewarded with $80 in LPG account credits when you sign up. Whether it's cooking, hot water or heating, Elgas has got you covered. For $80 in LPG account credits, visit the website elgas.com.au, download the Elgas app or give us a call on 131 161. Elgas, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. City Park Radio relies on its members, volunteers and local business to maintain the programs you enjoy. And you can support them and the wide variety of programs by making a donation to the station. It's so easy for you to donate. Just head to our website, cityparkradio.com, on your PC or smart device and click the Donate button. Anything over $2 is tax deductible and you'll receive your receipt immediately by email. Donate now to City Park Radio. Ah, we got it all here at Inver Bay News Agency, so come on in. After your ticket to freedom, maybe some gifts for the missus, or even just bits and bobs to get you through the daily grind. Come on in, we're open. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Thanks, Sunday. Chris. I'm Mr. Lowe, and we've got it all. Remember, Inver Bay News Agency is open for you, when the others are. Open just about all hours, Inver Bay News Agency, opposite Utah Stadium, with free parking at the door. Buy it, gift it, wrap it. Posted. Lovely jubbly. A proud sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Welcome back to Utah Stadium with Dave Moore, Matthew McGee, Michael Walker, Rob Sad on the boundary, Dave Grub on stats. And it's great to work on a very special guest to our broadcast here at halftime. And it's none other than the coach of the Tasmania Devils Football Club, the boys and the girls. Welcome to Jeremy Webberley. Good day, Jez. Hey guys, hey guys. Thanks for having me. No worries. Have you been watching tonight's game at all? Oh, I tuned in for the, for the last 25 minutes. Yeah, so pretty much watched the uh, second quarter. So good arm wrestle. Um, yeah, it looks uh, Lonnie started to get back into it when they put Joby Harper in the rock. Um, yeah, so it looks like it's going to be a tight game, which will be nice. Yeah, mate, uh, at, of course, at the moment, we've got the Tasmania Devils boys playing, but uh, for those that don't know, you've got a dual role there with the boys and the girls. Let's talk about the girls first up. They had a pretty successful season, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, probably the second year in a row that they've been able to compete really well. Um, yeah, so we, we had a really good year um, for the girls. Um, yeah, we've got a few new players in there, so um, yeah, it's good to see them 
some of our girls um, really develop nicely as individuals and um, you know we've got probably three or four girls that we think have got some opportunity to potentially get drafted which is great but um, yeah really another really good year to sort of step in the right direction for the girls program obviously an outstanding um, year last year under Cam Joyce and um, we sort of were able to continue that on and, and, and really build upon that so yeah there's some, uh, some girls that should Home should hop their head up really high and have themselves on the back, and all sorts of individuals have given themselves an opportunity um, with the draft in over the next three or four weeks. Um, and we've got a really good pa- platform now. We're excited by some of the uh, some of the girls coming through. That's for sure. Jess, uh, on a personal level, there, how did you juggle those two commitments there, the boys and the girls programs, especially? In a sort of uh, February March, when one was sort of uh, in full swing and the other one was about to be in full swing. Oh, look, it was challenging. I'm not going to lie. Helped out with the Clarence girls in a very limited capacity um, before taking on the main sevens job. So um, that in itself was challenging. Look, it took me a while to, um, I suppose, to get my head around that and figure out the, the things to do with girls coaching. I think I adapted um, well towards the end, but I definitely learned a lot of that um, um, throughout that program. And it was a challenging period through the, the March April period when the boys were ramping up to start this season. The girls were just winding up and concluding. But I, I just think really good help, to be honest. Like, um, Jamie Haywood, Nathan Warren and Matthew Armstrong that do a fantastic job in, in getting the, um, the boys and girls there and the talented ones but then I've also got a really good, um, really good coaches in each region that I can call upon to get the job done you know, Matt Weller, Darren Crawford, Jared Reed, Robbie Devine those boys um, around the state, Sharon Egger have done a fantastic job in preparing the boys to, um, for the start of the year uh, because the reality is that uh, for me I don't really have that much to do with the boys um, you know I'm still in contact with them and taking training and those types of things but um, you know a lot of my time through that March April period is invested in the girls program. Jez I've got uh, my two fellow commentators here Matthew McGee and Michael Walker so uh, Matthew over to you first. Oops, sorry, mate. He's got to turn us on here Fossil. Um, Thanks for joining us, Jez. Uh, just uh, turning our attention to the boys, uh, a pretty positive start to the season, four wins early. How are you finding the boys' program in regards to specific players there? You've got some uh, top-end stars. Let's go through them first. Boys like McCallum um, and, in particular, Lockie Cowan. The Allies program this year, plus uh, Robert Sanders as well, obviously um, left us. Um, chasing schooling um, scholarships. The seven guys in that program a really good effort. We um, think we've had a couple of guys that were a little bit stiff to miss out, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we're really impressed with some of our top end talent. Like Lockie Cowan had an unbelievable start to the year. Like he probably couldn't do- have done any more to impress recruiters than how he started this year. So um, he's been exceptional as half back. Um, Seth Hunter, oh, Seth Campbell, sorry, who's uh, another North West Coast uh, and transferred down to the North Pond system this year. He's had a really consistent year. I think he's averaging over 20 uh, disposals a game and, and hitting the scoreboard twice a week as well. So um, he's been consistent. Um, and then you've got guys like you know Tommy McCullum and Cam Owen that um, are really building um, week in, week out. And Liam Jones, they've all been sort of consistent performers. And then... Um, a, guy that you, um, a guy that you'd be extremely familiar with, Brandon Beer, he's had a, a fantastic start of the year as well, like he's multiple goals a week, and he's a bit of a highlight reel. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about some of the top-end talent we've got, um, but I think overall, like, the, the one thing you can only ask as a coach, um, you know, with new groups is that they play for each other and um, they're willing to give service to each other, and that's something that I've been very impressed with with this group. One of the key things of a Devils program is that high-level environment, high-performance environment. In particular, not so much that top end, but that next level of boys that hopefully when they've finished their Devils program will come back and be good TSL players or maybe in the future VFL Tasmania players. Who has surprised you this year in terms of someone you haven't really seen much of and now you know they're a lot better or they've done really well on what you thought? Oh, look, I think Isaac Hyde from one system's one that sort of jumped out at us. Um, you know, look, he's obviously been in and out of um, uh, the long system senior team, and he, he's been really good. Um, Josh Gillow, who hasn't been able to play, um, I don't know if he made a, um, made a senior game at long system as of yet. I might be mistaken, he may have played no, he hasn't. a senior game already, but I think he's um, one that's really jumped out of the box. There's probably two long system boys that are really high, and, and Gillow that have really impressed us. Hyde just with his 
He's just re- look, he's got great knowledge of the game. He uses the ball well. He never seems to make mistakes. And Gillow's just, um, you know, a guy that we can place in a key position in defence. And he, he's really competitive. He's very sensible. He, um, and he's the type of top team that he want to be with. He's, he's tough and uncompromising and, uh, and puts the team first. And there's probably a couple of guys that have been really surprised. Um, and then there's some boys from the North West Coast as well that uh, haven't had the opportunity to play TSL footy. Um, until this year, and a couple of them are still playing footy up there at, um, at local level. But Bo Nash has had a really consistent year, and Heath Ollington as well, um, transferred to North Orney. Um, those two guys have, have sort of really kicked on as well. We start to move in now to that Allies program that you mentioned before. I suppose some interest will start to uh, ramp up from uh, interstate and recruiters and managers and that sort of thing. Do you have much to do with that as the coach? Yeah, a little bit some paces, like. Um, more questions, how they're going, where they're at, um, all those types of things. Um, sort of, especially leading up to the start of the year in terms of before they start playing games, and, you know, there's a, a range of conversations around, you know, who do you think, um, what types you've got, um, what types of characters they are, all those types of things, where you think you're this, that, um, all those sort of conversations transpire at the start of the year and then um, sort of once they... Um, start playing that sort of first month, five weeks that we're into now. It sort of goes a little bit quiet, to be honest, and then um, it ramps right back up again, leading into the Allies. So, um, yeah, so yeah, it's been good. We've had a number of conversations about um, a number of our players. The recruiters are really just trying to get as much um, content as they can from across Australia, everywhere, to inform decisions and opinions on players. And, um, you know, they're in the process of doing that, and I'm sure towards the back end of the year, as we, cl- we get closer to the draft, the draft and the conclusion of the season, we'll, we'll start having more um, serious conversations about the individuals they're looking at. And your own uh, professional learning and development in this role, a different role than what you're used to, what, what are the key differences and, and successes you've had moving from a club environment against uh, with senior senior squads and now dealing with these 16, 17, 18 year old boys? How have you found that and what have been the positives and the, and the challenges I suppose with those boys? Yeah, look, I think with anything, you've got to get the players to connect together, and that's one of the hardest things to do within this program because we're in three regions. So, as I said before, we, we've had some really strong themes around and values around what we want to be known as as a team, and then we've created um, we've created a little bits of motivation from week to week, and or weeks to week, to be honest, to try and get them to buy into something. And to, to the players, credit both girls and boys, they have really bought into what it means to wear the hat. That's something that I've been really proud of themselves and the boys. Um, I think the NAB League and such as well is, um, look, it's very open. Like, there's a lot of dialogue between coaches. And, um, you know, there's a lot of regions and a lot of clubs within Victoria that are in the NAB League that um, are set up similar to us. So, there's, you know, there's always ways. Each coach and each area is sort of willing to help out each other. So that's a positive that the NAB League has done something that I've discovered. Um, and I think also, like, I think we probably underestimate especially at TSL, I mean, just how, how good our footy is here, um, just the structure and the process they play. Like, a lot of the guys um, come to our program, especially if they've been involved in TSL clubs or senior clubs and playing senior footy, they've got a really good game understanding of it and also understanding how the game should be played. So um, that's been a real positive for me. Um, you know, I have to, haven't had to educate a lot of the boys, especially about how the game should be played. They've sort of, uh, they've sort of got that down pat. So for me, it's about... Um, you know, making out how we play pretty basic and then just going out and getting them to back themselves in and, and help the person next to them, which they've done extremely well. Yes, fantastic. And look, tomorrow's game, Eastern Rangers, uh, pretty big game. You're, you're in the top eight at the moment. Um, all these Victorian or Melbourne teams, Victorian teams are pretty strong. What are you expecting tomorrow from the Eastern Rangers? Yeah, fierce contest. They're um, coached by Trav Clark and it looks like they've got a bit of Collingwood um, top brand behind how they play, like they're a very fierce, good defensive pressure team. It's got a bit of a small forward line, which is a little bit unusual for the NAB League. So, um, yeah, we were expecting a fierce contest. They're a pretty good team, to be honest. Like they, they are the game behind us on the ladder. They play some pretty good opposition. Obviously, had a fantastic win over Sandringham on the weekend for one of the best teams in the comp. So, yeah, look, it's going to be beyond. Um, charging, so we're, we're really keen to make sure that we give ourselves a good showing. And, um,
later in our jump around the world quite wide. So yeah, it's been a really fierce contest um, and I'm sure our boys will deliver tomorrow with their actual content. Fantastic for our viewers and listeners. So the game's here tomorrow at Utah Stadium at midday. So get down and support the, the Tassie Devils. Jez, it's been uh, fantastic to have you on City Park Radio. Thanks for your insights and congratulations so far on the boys and girls program. You've done a fantastic job. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Cheers. No worries. That's Jeremy Webley there, the coach of the Tasmania Devils. We'll come back in a moment and we'll set the scene for the second half here on City Park Radio. Barrett's Music is proud to support music in Tasmania in many forms. In fact, we've been supporting music in our community for decades. We value music participation, Taz. So we can help you get... Park Radio. It costs you nothing to tune in to City Park Radio. But if you become a station member, your small annual subscription of around a dollar a week will help with our running costs. As a member, you could stay a devoted listener or you could be a presenter or help in the office. Community Radio is listener subscriber radio, so get involved. Check out the subscription page on our website, cityparkradio.com. Or phone us on 6334-3344. City Park Radio. Are you dreaming of a winter break? Do you need extra cash? Cash in your old and unwanted gold jewellery at Cash Converters. Declutter your house this winter and earn some cash to boot by turning gold into silver. Right now, Cash Converters will give you a fast, free estimate and offer top prices on gold jewellery. Even broken pieces or sink lids. So why not? Get planning that winter escape now. Cash Converters Kings Meadows. Trusted and locally owned for 25 years. Proud sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports forecast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61, a sponsor of City Park Radio. Not far away from the start here at Utah Stadium. I've just seen Rob emerging uh, from uh, I think the North Thonston rooms down there. Rob, what's news down on the surface there? Well, I've blown the step counter up, boys. Uh, I've gone oh. to both rooms, actually. Well so I'm not going to mention the uh, shoes again, Macca. No, uh, I want you to. Get me a pair as well. <laughs> Size 11 if anyone's listening. But anyway, uh, look, a couple of things from the, the rooms. I'll start with Launceston. Mitch Thorpe talked a lot about Launceston taking the game on. Uh, he felt that that would be a strength of theirs. And, and when we saw North play here last week, we know with Fletcher Bennett parked across that... Parked across that back line. Parked across that back line as an intercept the defender. Uh, if they just start kicking it, you know, to him, that's just going to play into the Bombers' hands. So Mitch talked a lot about them taking the game on. In the Northern Bombers' rooms, they're really, really happy, as you touched on at uh, half-time, really happy with where the game's at, very confident in their ability to, uh, to, to take the game on. And uh, the message that came out of the room was just keep doing what we're doing, keep that pressure on. The, obvious, the ground conditions are obviously helping them with the way they play the game, the contested style of football. So uh, we're in for a great second half, guys. Fantastic. Thanks, Rob. We're here for you during the second half. No worries. And just uh, before I go, um, the, uh, the the Pierce debate you were talking about, I guess there's a trivia competition in that, isn't there? I think uh, Jake Pierce is at Hillwood now. Nathan Pierce played at Hillwood. I think they're both Hillwood Premiership players. I'll let you go with that one, guys. Have a good one. Fantastic, Rob. And uh, I think you called Jake Pierce. Uh, you, got, you got him slightly famous on the bounce one year, too. Oh, he dribbled that ball, and Jason Johnston was furious That's with right. the word. It uh, yep. made headlines, yeah. You have to do something, right, I suppose, in the how many of you have done this. Anyway, we're going to get underway here in the third quarter. Tina McCormack back in the ruck. You mentioned that Harper was in the ruck a little bit round the ground, changed the game a fraction. Here's Gillo, quick hand, Seymour overshot the handball. Avent's going to pounce like a mouse on the trap. He comes forward, man, Shandon. He's there as well as Pierce. He bends over. He picks it up as Pierce. Flicks the handball out. Man, Shandon. Spread eagle on the ground. Umpire says, play on. And it goes out of bounds. Left forward pocket. Just a few stats uh, from the Launceston boys, Foz, in the first half. Joby Harper uh, was the leader of all comers there. He played uh, pretty well. He had uh, 17 touches. Seymour, 16. Polferman with 12. So that was about where they were at. Ball up, Launceston, they're holding everything they can. It's going to be holding the footy, that will help. And it's going to be Jamison House's free kick. We've seen him all year really stand down at full back and some of those whitewash results really hasn't had to do much. 
He's uh, earned his dollars tonight as Jamison House, the boy from Burnie. He comes down the front here, up looking for Morris. Cox Goodger, first to react, turns his court, handball, don't know if he got a hand to it. Umpire said he did even put the act on. The umpire, now Seymour, up and under kick, Alex Lee. Morris hits the ball hard, tripped. Now he's beset upon, one, two. Umpire says ball. Well, that's harsh. But uh, man, Shannon's going to take the free kick. That's got to be a. Oh, geez, he was lucky there. The umpire hadn't said stand. And Shandon, centre wing, plenty of space in the corridor. They're virtually just uh, giving them a little uh, bit of rope there to try and go into the centre corridor. They chose not to. Only went down as far as uh, Jaden Hines. Here's Morris again. He's not happy. He's fired up, young Zachary. After that late goal, he gets up, and now he's. Uh, He's gone again. Two Chilcott. holes of footy. No, that's, uh, Chilcott. that's Chilcott. And Shandon just uh, didn't quite get enough on it. His music at cutoff spills out out of bounds. So once again, yeah. tough, hard, scrappy footy. Started the same way in the first quarter, North Launceston, didn't they? After being fresh, they've had another you know, chance to put the legs up for 15 minutes and come out really attacking. Haven't hit the scoreboard, but they're... Attack at the balls, ferocious. Lee wins a tap out here towards Cox Goodge. He kicks it off the ground inside 50. Tough contest coming. Here comes now Jacob Boyd. It's a left foot kick. Declan Chug might get there first. He gets a bad bounce. He does get it. Gets it here towards Stingle. Stingle. Holfman wins out on that occasion. Right with the handball. Back to right. We'll get back to you in a minute, Max. I know what you're going to say. Alec Wright gets the handball sideways to Holfman over the top to Harpy. Here they go, the Blues. Got the overlap here with Thurlow. The ball stays in play, it does. He gets the 50 short kick, finds right. 25 out, slight angle. Where are you going to go, Max? Oh, I just thought single could have been a bit harder over the ball then. He was, you know, reached in and rather than getting in and putting his body in, he uh, made a bit of a, a rookie error I'm going to go back before that. I reckon Declan Chug should have hoed the boot into and kicked it in for 50. Yeah. I reckon he handed it back over his shoulder like it was dry weather footy. Yeah. I reckon he should have got it, kicked it inside 50. Alec Wright. We're all experts. That's right. <laughs> 13 points the margin will be if he converts, which is significant in a low-scoring game. Wright for goal. Doesn't kick many these days, but he's kicked that one. Alec Wright. Much to the pleasure of the Launceston fans below us. Just takes that margin out now to 13 points. 5 8 38 to 3 7 25. A lot of experienced players involved in that passage of play. A lovely kick from Thurlow found right within scoring range. Well, you yep. can see North Launceston tonight. They don't want to turn the ball over at that true centre half back position. They've gone wide a lot of the time. As soon as it was turned over, boom. Yeah, and uh, Launceston have proven over the last two to three years that if you give them the opportunity, give them that. You know, a little bit of space to straighten up with those you know, short 45 kicks like they did then. Uh, they'll hurt you every time. Alex Lee up against McCormack. Taps it to where he wants. Avent's the recipient this time. Jake Smith right with him. Doing a negating role, I'd imagine. Wasn't much use in getting the footy there. Here's uh, Seymour. Good mark. Rose above the back. The Musica. Musica. Inside 50. Hit up Jake Hines. One. Nearly two bites of the cherry. He turns, he goes, left foot. Got to bounce through. It's got to bounce through. Well, Leafling was taken out in the contest by Thurlow, but the umpire said that's fine. And it's another special from Jake Hines. That's two for him. Shouldn't have been a goal there, should it? But apart from the fact of uh, Jackson Thurlow using the experience that he's had on the mainland the last few years, just using his body, made it look a genuine attempt to to attack on the ball and just pushed, uh, like you said, I think it was, uh, who was it? Uh, Van Dam underneath the ball. Uh, Leaf flank. Leaf flank. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, mate, you know, a good good goal assist there by uh, Jackson Thurlow. Danger signs here for the Bombers. They need the next goal desperately. Out for the middle is Chilcott. Taken off him by Stingle. Looks for a handball release. And that person is Jack Avent. Up towards half forward. Front position, Pierce. Here's the contest. Boyd can't pick it up. Out the back, Seymour, smart kick here. Might find Chilcott, gets a great bounce. He spills, uh, he spills over though. And then gets holding the ball. So He's had a dirty night, young Chilcott. Young He's come Kai off the Chilcott. Bench. Yep, there's a uh, vent now. Routed 50, awaits him. 
Say he's going to go long. He does. Towards the goal square. Looking for a high flyer. Off hand to the back. Pierce gets on his right foot and kicks a goal. Nathan Pierce. That's his second for the evening. And that's the one they really needed to stay in touch. 4 7 31 to 6 8 44. And the second and third quarters, we've seen a flurry of goals at the start of the quarter. Yeah, we certainly have, Dave. And, and that one was just a uh, smart play by Vin. He could have gone back, banged it in real quickly. What he, what he elected to do was just wait for a few, you know, a bit of movement inside 50, waiting for a bit of a gap to, to open up, kick to that gap, and that allowed uh, that allowed Pierce to pounce on it, uh, 20 out from goal, and uh, dribbled it through. OK, so... It, uh the contest we've got here under lights, Utah Stadium, is Matthew McGee for City Park Radio. Well, North Launceston respond. They needed it. Here it comes, Harper. Skewed kick out in front. Good effort there from North Launceston and Oscar Van Dam, but it spills out to Seymour. Another uh, possession getter in the first half. Lots of inside stuff. Gillo lurks. As does Brown. Looks for Taylor. They're running in waves here at the moment of Launceston. Declan Chug, your goal. Good tackle, Brendan Taylor from behind. That's his job, Max mentioned it. Forward line pressure. He picked young Declan Chug's pocket, snuck up behind him. And uh, he's going to have a result and free kick. Fletcher Bennett gets up uh, yep. very sore again. Gives it off the handball. Over the top to Thurlow. Pulls the trigger. It's an excellent kick. It's through. From outside 50, Jackson Thurlow. Golski. Well, things are just starting to open up a fraction, aren't they? Just the experience. Interesting there, Taylor actually handballed the ball. Jake Smith thought it was coming to him because he was the one closest, but it actually went past Jake Smith. It found uh, Thurlow from outside 50, near standing start. He's always had good skills, Jackson Thurlow. I was going to say, Max, earlier on, the half-back line and that back line of Launceston have just... They've just and ramped it up, amped it up, haven't they? And they're just not allowing too many goals that side. And a lot of their attacks are coming from there. Yeah, they are. And they've done it without uh, Jameson House tonight, too. Like, he's, he's been quiet by his standards. In the middle of the uh, Utah Stadium, still got the markings from last Sunday here. Now, Gillo, short kick, Ahern and Casey Brown. Here after it. Great bump there by Brown. Knocks Ahern off the ball. Plenty of reinforcements, though, for the Bombers. Stingle couldn't pick it up. Now it's with Jake Smith, the veteran. 2013, he debuted for Launceston. Off the ground, close to the boundary line. Not deliberate. Boundary throwing. North have just got to learn to stay on their feet a bit more too. Um, young Hearn yeah. then just got knocked off the ball that far was, too easy. That was boys against men there. Jake Smith, a really experienced player at TSL level. Hearn probably played, what, less than less than 10 games. Half a dozen. Yeah, my Here word. Here he is again. He takes the ball. Handballs to Jack Aven, who does a drop kick. Now we've got a throw there against Ahern this occasion. So it's going to come back to that man, Jake Smith. Short to Musica. Centre wing. Musica takes his time. Long centering kicks. Not great. Met here by Sulzberger. Anster Stingle. Shrugs a tackle. Gets around a second opponent. Kicks up here. Doesn't get penetration with the kick. Intercepted by Wright. Bennett held on to a long time after the tackle. Tuttle now towards half forward. Kick's got too much heat on it for Tyrrell. Spills out of bounds. Free kick, Maxi. Uh, yeah, I thought they might have. Uh, I thought Tom Bennett deserving the one there. He got rid of it and was held way too long afterwards. Four inside 50s to three, the Blues way for Dave Gruber. And we've got uh, boundary throwing 40 metres out from the Blues goal. Harper wins the tap, doing a bit of uh, relief ruck work. Sulzberger gets a half distance kick taken there by Gillo, I think it is. Gets the high tackle, just wait for him to get up. Four inside 50s for three goals is a good return, isn't it? Beginning of the quarter. Bailey Gillo kicks deep towards Hines. No one flies. Bennett drops the mark. Thurlow releases the handball in towards Taylor. He's got Hines in support, but uh, good defense there from the Bombers. Sees the ball out of play. Been playing 10 and a half minutes. It's North Launceston 4 7 31, trailing Launceston 7 8 50. Underway in the AFL second quarter. Sydney 3 4 22. Trail a very accurate Richmond. Five goals straight 30 max. Yep, that's what Rob and I need tonight. That's it's what we time. need the Tiger Army. Tiger time. Cox Goodger under pressure. Avent. 
They've definitely clamped down on Cox Goody, I reckon, at the stoppages. Just hasn't been able to get away. There is no one forward of centre for North Launceston. Turn around. Goes to uh, Gillo. Now it's a turnover. Rickard. They're away. The flyer in Rickard. He tried to get it over the top to Bale. He's a bit unassuming, Rickard. But I'll tell you what, he can run. And now he's caught. He's got and Gillo can bit. also run. And he runs really fast the other way. So Gillo, good use of the footy. Left foot. Here's the game staying to add up. Boy. How to do that, boys. All comes through. Brown. Over the top. Here's Pulferman. Step inside. Tunnel. Hasn't kicked many at TSL level, and this won't be one. Ball shot. Oh. Hang time on the chest, Jake Hines. A human highlight reel tonight is Jake Hines. He turns. Play on, Jake Hines. Hits the post. Any climactic. Well called Matthew McGee. Exciting stuff. Out comes Fletcher Bennett. 7 9 51 to 4 7 31. 20 points of difference. Here's Tuttle again, I think, on top of the ball. Can't quite pick it up. In fact, it was Seymour. Here they go now. Ricard towards half forward. Here's a chance for North Launceston. Bennett up against House. Bennett wins it. Kicks from open forward line. Only man there is Isaac Newitt. He'll run on to it if it sits. Oh. He does now. Right foot kick gets to go. Isaac Newitt. He took his time, he was under pressure, and he made sure of it. So, second goal out the back like that for North Launceston in this quarter. And it's a really good contest here. 5 7 37, 7 9 51. Hines misses at one end, Max. Isaac knew it, converts at the other. He does, Dave, and that's two that Hines has missed tonight from set shots playing on and around and kicking over his, over, uh, across his body. Smart by Tom Bennett, wasn't it? Like he, he had the sixth oh, yeah. sense that yeah. he had the man loose 20 metres out. And, and, uh, and him keeping his feet in a contest was different yeah. to what a few of the younger North Launceston guys have been, have been doing tonight. So uh, hopefully on the highlight reel they'll point a few things like that out as well, just, just to keep teaching them as they go along. And North Launceston, they continue to respond. But Launceston has still got that little break in the set. Here's Seymour. Centre wing. Been really good tonight, his sort of conditions. Pumps it inside, 50. Uh, well done there from Fletcher Bennett. He's looked sore all night. He did well one-on-one -on, -one on Thurlow. The ball goes out of bounds just outside the forward 50 for Launceston. So Thurlow plays a little bit on ball, then goes forward. Him and Hines, they uh, form a very potent forward line. Jake Hines, Brendan Taylor there. Inside 50, lurking. Here's Harper with that quick kick. Been lots of those tonight. Rickard, that's a Hearn, sorry. Goes through, could have been pushed in the back. Umpire says held on to. Late call. And it's going to be a free kick. Okay. To... I'm going to go Hearn. Yeah, it's Hearn. I'm going to go Hearn. Shush, Max. Play your role, do your job. A Hearn. Sewell's Berger. <laughs> Outside 50. It's a long day at work, isn't it? Friday night footy. Starting to get a little bit silly. Manchandon on the lead, ignored. Sulzberger up the line, Bennett, right. Here it comes. Manshandon, turnover, slung in the tackle, turnover. Thurlow, Bennett, Harper, kicks it in. Declan Chug, turnover, Tyrrell, tucked away in the pockets. Oh, that was set up for a beauty. Off hands. Umpire says throw it in. So, good third quarter this one. So, plenty of goals kicked. Dave Gruber stats here inside 50s Launceston 9 to 4. So the bomber staying in the game through good conversion at the moment. Clearances this quarter 6 to 5 the Blues way. And of course uh, Alex Lee still dominating the hitouts and he wins another one here. It's a shallow throw in. Stingles tackled. Other players around the contest. And we have another ball up. Hey, Phil Macker. Tigers have kicked another one. Six straight. 36, Sydney 3 5 23 up at the SCG. Max is getting excited. Two big games in the TSL tomorrow. Clarence and Lauderdale's a big one. Perhaps playing for fourth place. And uh, Tigers up against North Hobart. Because we're going to get another stoppage here. About 10 minutes in from the boundary. Thought that SCG game might have been one for you boys to head up to, Max. Cut a sway through Bondi, Kings Cross on the way through, down to uh, Paddington and all that. Not, not this year? Uh, not allowed to go there anymore. Gold Coast, you'll think. As uh, Seymour kicks it here towards Taylor, nearly takes the mark. Might have got high contact, yeah, he, he did. did, yep. So Brendan Taylor, right place, right time. And uh, he's pretty good set shot, is Brendan Taylor. 
He's about 20 out, slight angle. He's kicked one today in the first quarter, the 24 yep. minute mark. 14 for the season. Brendan Taylor in a good patch of form at the moment, and he kicks inaccurately this occasion. I wrapped him up, he let me down 7 10 52 to 5 7 37. Here's Ricard. Ricard's going to go back across in front of goal. Chug, he's going to go again. Goes short. Still tucked away in the back pocket though. Hit up, Mitchell, Cox Goodjar. Not many touches this quarter. Look for the uh, play on advantage. Here he goes now up the line, Alex Lee. So on centre wing. Alex Lee's going to give it on the outside to Cox Goodjar. He's trying to draw him. He does. Made hard work of it. Cox Goodger now by hand. Puts Bulls, uh, Sulzberger under the pump and it goes out of bounds. So they've managed to get the ball about 70 metres, but it wasn't pretty, Max. No, it wasn't. And uh, their, their coach was involved in all that play there, trying to, just trying to get something happening for the boys. He can sense it himself, I think, out there that you know, we need to do something urgently. Alex, Alex, Alex Sorry, Lee, was, it might actually remind me a little bit of a screen there. Uh, basketball, a bit like Mikhail McIntosh type screen. Oh, as he heads off back to Canada. Here we go. Wants to pick it up. Handball sideways. Gillo. Handball, not great. Might fall right for Tyrrell. Smart kick. Paul Freeman will get there. And he'll take the mark. About 25 out on the boundary line. Jack Rewalt snags one at the SCG. 7 1 43. They lead now lead by 20 points. All the money was, to, was for Sydney tonight. All of it. Not mine only. All of it. A bit responsibly, of course, but uh, yeah, I think it was just all on the back that Tom Lynch wasn't playing, and they've uh, got good system, the Tigers. Brady Palfreyman. This one to put the margin beyond 20 points, I think, for the first time in this game. Yep. So, Palfreyman. Having a great season for goal. Umpire likes it a lot. It's a goal to Launceston. Brady Palfreyman's happy with that one. It's multiple high fives and eight goals now for the Blues. 8 10 58, 5 7 37. Thanks to our sponsors, El Gas. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by El Gas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 131 161. Maxi Walker. Yeah, just a bit of a dangerous gap that's opened up now, hasn't it, in this first 18 minutes of the, of the third quarter. Launceston have kicked, uh, what's that? That's their fourth for the quarter, and uh, North have kicked the two, but uh, they just seem to be getting on top. Sharking the ball well from um, Alex Lee in the middle. Like like you said, Macca Cox Goodger's not being as uh, destructive around the stoppages. McCormack evens that one out this time with Lee, but they get the clearance. Here's Stingle to Cox Goodger. Arches the back, breaks the 50. Only gets it as far as the line, and Jamison House double punches it through. Jeez, they get it out the front of the stoppage though when they get going. He was tingling on that occasion, using his pace. Comes back to Fletcher Seymour. Racks him up. Slow play. Umpire calls play on. Cox Goodger goes at him. Comes back into the middle now under pressure. It's got to be good. Musica will turn and go on the 45 out towards the boundary. Here's Harper. Up against Nan Curvis. Harper just kept his feet. Nan Curvis now goes into him from behind. And it's going to be a ball up as they go stacks on the mill. Kai Chilcott over the top. Yes, Fozzle? I was going to say, Max, it, that shows what uh, Cox Goodger can do when he does get free, doesn't it? Absolutely. If he can get loose for just a, five minutes in a game, he can be really damage it. And even 20 points at the 20-minute mark. Groobs hasn't really enjoyed it tonight because the clock matches up with the time clock. So it's uh, it's 8.43 p.m. Groobs thinks it's 20.43 gone in the quarter. No. In fact, it's just ticked over the 20. They've gone deliberate, Max. Oh, my gosh. You hear it on the radio, on the television, at <laughs> AFL level, but... Uh, Jaden Hines, inside 50. Plenty of Northern Bombers there. They spoil. Harper, first to react. Declan Chug, fingers yeah. kicked off. Yeah. It's going to be a free kick to Declan Chug, half back. It's uh, 20 minutes, 27 gone groups, and the time is 20.43. Very close, very close. It will be right here in about another eight seconds. The clock and the time clock will both be squared up. Oh, we love you, Groves. Save more. Fletcher Bennett from back pocket. Lovely long kick outside defensive 50. 
Who's at the spillage? Looks like it's Burling over there. Now to Gillo. Nice kick. Finds Harper. Play on. Touched. North Hudson player got a hand on it. Chance now for Lee Flang. Players going in desperately, diving the ball. Harper back to Gillo. He's off balance when he kicks, but it's not bad. It's the front of the square. From the spillage now, Curvers. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh, dear. He's just turned inside out <laughs> across the line. He wasn't under a lot of pressure, but uh, here we go. So, Corey Nan Curvis from the Aboriginal flag in the goal square. Cruises out now. Up here towards half back. Over the back, it's Pierce. He's tackled by Burling. Took on the tackler. Yes, says the umpire. So, it's going to be a free kick to Josiah Burling. 21 minutes gone. And uh, time on. Pretty important part of the game here. The Bombers probably only want this margin at three-quarter time if they think they have a chance. Boyd, to the top of the square. Big flyers over the back now. Curvis fumbles slightly. Fletcher Bennett under pressure. Back to Lee Flang. Handball sideways. Player caught without it. And Curvis. And Curvis, it's a client advantage to Declan Chuck. Handball now to Man Shandon. Over the top they go, the Bombers. Oh. We got out of it well there, did Oscar Van Dam. And ends up getting a nice little kick on the 45 to Stingle. Stingle. So, yeah, sideways to Cox. Defensive wing, defensive centre, Cox Kutcher. He's gone in a bumper bar. Three of them got him. Here comes Jake Smith, hit up. Fletcher falls over. Jake Hines again. Pinpoint over the top of Nick Curvis, who's going to mark that one or send it through. And it's going to be mark. a mark just on Declan Chug. Chug tucked away in that pocket again. Injury. Musica in that uh, tackle with Cox Goodger. Just slowly getting up. Looks like he's all right, but uh, took him a long time to get up. The three of them went for him. That's out of bounds off the toe. It's going to be a free kick. Cox Goodger has a spell. It's off uh, Gillo. I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed Gillo's game tonight. Now, it's yeah. going to be a Gillo kick, actually. So I've really enjoyed Gillo's game tonight. Probably most of the footy I've seen for a couple of years, only being a junior. But uh, he's got good speed, good kick, good penetration. This one goes inside 50. Bales sent under. It's going to be a tunneling kick. It is. Free kick to Bales. One of those boys now, Gillo. He's played a couple of seasons at senior level, Max. Starting to develop into his game. Fletcher Bennett. They've been parked inside defensive 50 for a while now. Bales. Contest there between Dan Curvis and Smith. Out of bounds. Inside 50 for Dave Gruber. Yeah, look at that. 13 to 5 this quarter, Macca. They're certainly uh, humbling the ball in, in this third quarter into the Launceston forward line. Not quite sure what happened there. Dan Curvis is uh, another one getting up very gingerly. Physical game. Harper takes it out of the ruck contest. Handballs to Paul Freeman. 50 out, swings it to the goal square. Hines direction, flies, can't take it. Spillage, it's Burling. Lays on top of it, tackled by Lee Flang. Merges to Stingle, gets the handle out just in time. Jack Avent now, tumbles a punt. And will only go as far here as Jacob Boyd if it sits for him. Good pace there from Van Dam, puts the pressure on. Well done, young Oscar Van Dam. He wins the contest, frees up Thomas. And how the umpire oh. see that one? No, holding, so it's going to come back here. Against Van Dam, they're away. Yep. So, he did well then, Van Dam. How good. Little kick now to Smith. Handball to Seymour. Dangerous again here. Towards the goal square. A lot of bombers get a fist on it. We're going to whistle and play again. In our downfield. Downfield. Or... This could be costly. Didn't see who that was against. Stingle's coming off a little bit gingerly. <clears throat> Brendan Taylor. Now he missed one from here. Or similar position not long ago. Not expecting he'll miss this one, but we'll wait and see. Just to take the margin out to 27. Brendan Taylor kicks the goal for Launceston. That's their ninth. 9 11 65 to 5 8 38. And uh, these goals had to come because they've had so much play inside their attacking 50 max. Yeah, they have, Dave. And, and in a game that's. Uh low scoring the way it is it's always difficult when you look up at the scoreboard and it's nearly three quarter time and you go okay we're we're five or six goals behind and then you look at how many you've kicked for three quarters oh we've only kicked five or six already ourselves it's, it's really demoralizing for the players because look you can see they're given a hundred percent there's just the class of Launceston at the moment though is starting to to shine a bit uh, brighter than the endeavor and uh, the enthusiasm of the north younger guys Okay, margin out now to 27 points. Well, almost 26 minutes gone in this quarter. 
Northern Bombers would love a late one here just to stay in touch. Tyrrell picks it up in the wing. Oh, clutch good job. Oh, high tackle. I was looking at frustration there, I think. I was yeah. looking back at the replay of uh, the free kick to Taylor. Geez, it was just a little nudge in the hip as he was in the air. That's what he got the free kick for. Towards half forward. Thumped away there by Kerr. Spills to Hubbard. Kicks towards the boundary line. Taken by Seymour over. So this quarter, Macca, it's been five goals to two. Yep. And as we mentioned, that inside 50 count for Dave Gruber. I mean, now 15 to five. So they're winning, just winning break, isn't it, yeah. uh, there? Speaking of winning breaks, the Tigers, 8 2 50. Lead the Swans, 3 5 23. Cox Goodjar was taken without it, had to kick it out of fresh air because of Avent and Polferman. A couple of laughters rub each other on the head and say, no worries. So, uh, yeah, Sydney Swans, they're definitely on a. Uh, on a bad stretch at the moment, the Swans. Why you pick them, I don't know. Looking in the mirror. Alex Lee. Up against Harper. Jake Smith off the deck. Gains valuable yards. Here's Morris. Picks it up clean. Looks for Taylor again. Been busy this quarter. Tyrrell. Tries to punch it forward on the outside. Morris, he'll look to step. He's held without it. Umpire said, no, you weren't. Play on. Over the top, Van Dam. Van Dam now sits on it. The umpire says, give it to me, 20 metres out. City end of the ground. So North Launceston, 5-8-38. They trail Launceston, 9-11-65. 27 and a half minutes gone. We get a little bit of extra in these quarters because of the stoppages. Lee finds beautiful palm. Getting his own way in there. Good work there, North Launceston. Through Blade Sulzberger. Back to Cox Goodger. They look over the top to Ahern. Oh, he tried to hang. He nearly got it. Over the top of the Launceston player in Chilcott. Chilcott did well. Not well enough because here's Avent on the outside again to Cox Goodger. Did they have one more goal in them before three-quarter time? Good effort there over the top from Leek. Up against uh, Pierce. The young and the old. Here's Leek. Pierce inside 50. Top of the square. Can't get much done here at the moment. North Launceston. The siren's about to go. Scooped up from right. Umpire saw it. Umpire saw it. Good not, umpiring. not the officiating umpire, but the one uh, beside. Back in the centre square. It looked like a throw, as in the, as in the motion, Max. But uh, it really, uh, in these conditions. So Tom Bennett. Big kick this one. He's going to have a shot. They said, can we get one? Bradley Cox Good just said, let's get one. Let's be real, Macca. Most handballs look like a throw these days. Especially the way you handle the Max. I kick it. So there's the siren, three quarter time. North Launceston looking for their sixth. Bennett, he'd love this. Tom Bennett gets him up and about. So Tom Bennett kicks North Launceston sixth. They move on now. Six, eight, 44. Trail Launceston at 9, 11, 65. So what's that? 21 points. Three-quarter time here on City Park Radio. 103.7, 96.5. Goal kickers, Maggie. Oh, you want me to do them this time? Yes. Okay, Tom Bennett, he's got two. Nathan Pierce has got two. Blade Sulzberg has got one. And Isaac Newitz got one. And for Launceston, Jake Hines with two. Brendan Taylor with two. And singles to right, Musica, Morris, Polferman and Thurlow. Five goals, three, two, three goals, one in that quarter. So they just stay in touch with that last goal, uh, Maxi. but uh, the, the play really is what we'd like to see at the moment. Yeah, it is, Dave. It just, just gives them that little bit of sniff and uh, belief that they're still in the game, that last goal. And uh, if they didn't kick it, Launceston would have been up and about a little bit more than what they are. They're still in control of this game at the moment, but... Uh, it's still not over. If Launceston, uh, or sorry, if North Launceston can start the way they have done in the, the first and the third quarter and apply that pressure that they did in the first five or six minutes of the, the first and the third quarter, be able to kick a couple of goals, get a bit of momentum going, you know, it's anyone's game again. But uh, one of the big game changes I think so far has been putting Harper into the ruck. Um, Lee's be, become less dominant. I'd be interested with groups of stats there in relation to the, the hit outs and the clearances. While the clearances have been 
fairly uh, even right throughout the game. The hitouts, I think, has started to even up a hell of a lot since uh, half has gone into the ruck. Yeah, clearance at the moment, 12 to 8, that quarter for Launceston. Uh, hit out still 16 to 5 in that quarter. Um, interest in the inside 50, so North Lots get three goals from six entries, um, whereas the, the Blues kicked five goals from 16 entries. Yeah. So much more efficient going forward than all the moments. They were, yeah. Marks inside 50, three to the Blues, uh, none to North Lots in that quarter, and the free kicks 25 to Launceston, 22 to North Launceston. Thanks to Dave Gruber uh, for keeping us up to date with those stats. We're going to take a break here on City Park Radio. When we come back, we'll look forward to the last quarter. Margin at the moment is the Blues by 21 points. Elgas is the smart choice. Make the switch and be rewarded with $80 in LPG account credits when you sign up. Visit the website, elgas.com.au, or give us a call on 131 161. A sponsor of City Park Radio. We know how busy you are in the community. It's meant sometimes you miss out on us, your community radio station. Now you don't have to with Community Radio Plus. Catch the latest news updates, listen to podcasts, join us live with the Community Radio Plus app. Local, live and loving it. City Park Radio. Whatever you're doing, take us with Community Radio Plus. Your home of community radio. Download from the App Store or Google Play. Susan from Booked Again is back to stay. She'll be at the Cosgrove Park Bowls Club in Waveney Street on the last Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday of every month from now on. With new stock arriving daily, call in for a bargain with thousands of books at reduced prices. Susan still has a great range of clothing and DVDs in store as well. Please enter from the Bowling Green level. Booked Again at the Cosgrove Park Bowling Club, Waveney Street, a sponsor of City Park Radio. You're listening to great TSL action, Tasmanian State League football on City Park Radio. Welcome back here to Utah Stadium with Dave Moore, Matthew McGee, Michael Walker, Dave Gruber and Rob Soward on the boundary. Uh, thanks to Darren Lovell and Damien Donnelly who just uh, texted me some stats. And Fletcher Seymour is probably one that's gone out of our radar a bit, boys. Uh, 26 uh, possessions. Uh, to three-quarter time, 6-10-10 ten, ten, uh, over the three quarters. So, uh, I think if you go back and have a listen to the commentary, I was trying to work Max into it okay. about Seymour, just trying to keep him aware. JB Harper, 25 possessions, Brody Pohl from a 19. And Bailey Gillow-Mackey, you spot on there, he's uh, got 16 possessions, had nine in that third quarter. Just like his cleanliness tonight, he's, he's, he shows some pace, he breaks some lines in his kick. Looks a lot more penetrative now uh, as he starts to grow and develop into his body a bit. So, yeah, good good game from Bailey so far. And uh, I think they've been keeping an eye on uh, some North players. If I just get that one up here. Uh, no, sorry, I've got that fact at the moment. But anyway, uh, we might get down to... Uh, before we get down to Rob, what do you got for us there, Matthew? Oh, no, I was just wondering about Miller Hodge. What's he done at the moment? Yeah, Is I he... might get Rob onto that. He might ask the question yeah. at the bench ah, there was it? during the last quarter. But we'll get down yeah. to you, Rob. All over it. Miller Hodge, uh, shoulder, out for about six to eight weeks. Indeed. Um, look, uh, again, ticked over the 20,000 steps, boys. Uh, just covered both huddles. Um, the Launceston huddle, very, very, Mitch thought very, very calm, very happy with what they're doing, praising their leaders and also praising their young guys for some of the great things they've done. Uh, the Northern Bombers, they're just talking about taking the game on. They've got to take the game on uh, at all costs. Take the game on look to play on, move the ball and uh, see what they can do. Interesting, Bradley Cox, good to starts on the bench, Max. Yeah, he came off a couple of times uh, during that quarter looking a little bit worse for wear and he's done a power of work yeah. today. Too, I don't look, away. next week they've got Clarence down at Bell Reeve and that's a game that's sort of in that sort of you know, third, Two fourth, v, fifth v, yeah, four, sort, of, it? sort of spot. Then they've got a bye, so look, I'll probably have a little crack here and then might put a couple on ice till next week. Of course, uh, Launceston got a big game at Windsor Park against Lauderdale, who knocked them off earlier in the season. So a couple of big weeks next week for those two teams. But they've got another 30 minutes to go tonight. It comes out through uh, North Launceston, the man Shandon. Here's uh, Rickard inside with the handball to Bales to man Shandon. They need one here to North Launceston. Up and flying goes Newitt. Back of the pack there is uh, Wright. He's done a power of work back there as Alec Wright. Umpire circles. Dave Moore circles. Go. Yeah, just saying that the stream score at the moment has got 50. It is 44. We're just trying to get that rectified. So it's 6 8 44 North Launceston to Launceston 9 11 65. Pulled up a little bit early. Sydney get another one, Max. They move on to 37. Search of Seymour. 
they take it there. So 5-7-37 Sydney. Trail a very accurate Tigers 10-2-62 just before half time at the SCG. Seymour goes sideways, not 15. Jake Smith looks to kick it into row three. Just lands inside. And that's uh, John Claude Van Damme. Just sniping it off a little karate chop. Out of bounds. It was, it was <laughs> Matthew. Yes. It did. He it work, huh? Van Damme. Foz is distracted. Doesn't give us stuff what we're yeah, talking about. Try, inside 50. What do you got there? You, you got all, he's got all his followers going. He's got all no, these no, social media followers, Maxwell. I'm trying to get the score change, Mac. He's got that. Twitter. He's got Facebook. He's got Instagram. <laughs> he's got TikTok and Snapchat. He cannot keep up with his followers. No, better do he's got his own profile in Launceston, and he can't keep up. I'll tell you what, there's nothing going on with football, Foz, because it's gone out of bounds for about the third time right. in a row. I'll do a bit of commentary then. So Off you go. In, 60 metres out from the Bombers' goal. They uh, trail by 21 points. So need some goals pretty quickly to stay in touch here. So here we go now with Seymour. Top possession winner for Launceston so far in this game. Harper takes it. He's dispossessed. Chance for the Bombers inside 50. Big tackle laid there by Casey Brown. So it'll be another ball up. So that's what the Blues want. Time will be ticking away. Four goals is a big ask in the last quarter. But if they get the first, a little bit of belief will start happening. Lee gets a tap out. Tries to find a vent. Little kick away by the Blues. Now it's with Musica. Cop the knock in the third quarter. The long penetrating kick is an absolute beauty. Finds Thurlow, Jackson Thurlow on attacking 50. They stream into attacking 50 to the Blues. Sets it up, the goal square. Nice ball over the back there by Hubbard. Mopping up is Nan Curvis. Gets it to Bennett, just inside the boundary. Little handball to Mitchell, yeah. who falls over. And he gets a high tackle. Lucky. Lucky I think to get it's out of uh, that. Josh Ricard who's got it. He thinks about the switch. Players are pretty well covered in their defensive goal square, so he has to go up the line. He's got a target here in Bennett up against Wright. Bennett fits it away from Wright. Pierce is in there. Jaden Hines. Little handball is a nice one to Wright. Kicks blindly. Falls from Rickard. Plays on straight away. Chance here for the Bombers. Oh, gee, that was a tough contest. Northern Bombers play. Newark goes down heavily. Boyd. Handball to Woolley. Sweeping handball sideways now to... Uh, Fletcher Seymour, he gets the kick to Paul Freeman. Jeez, knew it. There's not much job. I thought he was going to snap in half there. Probably just should have let the other bloke come through. Paul Freeman. Done well again. Switches the ball out to Seymour, who was standing next to him a second ago. Seymour on the outside. We'll try and talk Max into some votes for him. Wasn't too bad, Max, mind you. I'm hard on you at times last week. Not too bad on the votes. Hit up, Mark. Casey Brown. That's in the fourth for you. It's good for you. Appreciate the uh, praise. Thank you, Matthew. Josh McGinnis did have 42. Didn't sneak into a vote. Blake at Oakland. It's got more than last week. <laughs> Blake at Oakland. Seymour. Inside 50. Fly Musica. Someone's held on to. Musica Thurlow. went flying. But it was the experience of Thurlow. And uh, he's going to come down with a free kick against Leaflang by the looks. A little bit of hazy fog in that area at the moment on the field. It looks like a bit of dry ice. <laughs> a bit happening. Definitely not getting warmer. Just, oh, how's the experience of Thurlow though? Those couple of times this quarter, just in the right spot, right time. Terrific kick, Thurlow back. Goal to Jackson Thurlow. That's his second for the half, second for the game. The former Geelong Cat and Sydney Swan. And, uh, what an acquisition he's been to uh, land on the doorstep this year back in Launceston. Yeah, just you know, in the second half, it's been some of those experienced Launceston players, hasn't it, Maxi? Uh, the likes of Seymour, Palfrim and Harper, you know, the usual suspects, coming to the fore. Wright's been very good tonight as yep. well. So margin out 27. So uh, they've cancelled out that late goal from Bennett. And what the Northern Bombers wouldn't want here if they do go down is uh, for it to blow out because we know the Blues are very fit and will play this out for the final siren. Tina McCormack wins the tap. Out now here again to Seymour. Bounce eludes him. Gets it again. Another possession. Kicks it inside 50. 
A lot of one-on-ones here. Thurlow taps over the back here to Hines. Takes it in one hand. Loses possession. Back to Thurlow once again. Influential. Sideways kick is beautiful to uh, J.D. Harper, I think it is. It's pure class, Thurlow. He's marked. 30 out. 35 out, maybe. And uh, slightly left of centre. Joby Harper. Former South Launceston, Bernie. Stormer. Stormer, Werribee. He's uh, played at a lot of clubs. He's settled now at Launceston. Still a young man in footy terms. Playing some good footy. Harper for the second goal in a minute. He converts. No problem. 11-11-77 to 6-8-44. So uh, a goal from Thurlow and then an assist. And this game now is pretty much over as far as the result's concerned. Yep. Maxie Walker. Yeah, just uh, the clean and... Uh Below the knees, picked the ball up there, Jackson Thurlow. Just swung around notchingly onto the right foot and uh, could have picked probably two or three Launceston players out there and elected to kick it to Harper. And uh, he had the boot from about 35. Didn't even look like uh, missing. Goal umpire just stood where he was, just watched it sail straight over his head. Half time at the SCG. Buddy kicks one on the siren. Sydney 6 7 43, Trail Richmond 11 2 68. Alex so- Lee. Out of the ruck is Thomas. Not going far at the moment. Just inside the 50 in the square. Seymour in again. Bullocking work. That's what he's known for. Good game tonight. Out and over the top there. The Launceston player running is Kai Chilcott. Gets it on the outside. Cox Good, you're still on the ground, Max. I'll be team to just give him a little spell, I reckon. That one is a tired handball and it goes out of bounds. Out of wing. Cox Goodyear, he ran back to the centre there after that goal, and I can tell you what, the old legs weren't rolling over that well. Five goals now, down now at the moment. I know what I'd be doing, Maxwell. Looking forward to next week, I reckon. But he wants to lead. Bailey Gillow caught high. Play on advantage. Seymour. Harper. Inside 50. Can't find uh, Hines. First to react. Burling. Back to Hines. Oh, that was fast hands. Harper with the strength. Over the top, coming through Morris, gives it to Hines, another special. It is, he's kicked three beauties tonight as Jake Hines. None of them should be ordinary and none of them have uh, been easy. He's missed the easy one and kicked three absolute rippers. Geez, that was quick hands, all those players then, Max. It was, just uh, just knowing where their, their teammates were as well. because uh, And then Hines, as we watched it on the replay here, just... He, yeah. got, he was involved early, quick handball over to Harper, then another one there from Harper and uh, ended up with uh, Zach Morris, little hands over to, to Hines and kicks it on the right from it's the impossible angle. Yeah, that's unbelievable. So uh, three great highlight package tonight for Jake Hines. Played predominantly forward tonight, hardly any midfield or even high half forward time. And uh, especially in the last three quarters, very much closer to goal. Another inside 50. <laughs> Oh, Benny Donaldson was just having a good look. Here's Burley. This is going to bounce. Well done, Lee Fling. Over the top punch. That was tight. He got away with it. Taylor. Off the ground. Taylor. He went one bite at the cherry. He went two bites at the cherry. Kicked it off the deck. Brendan Taylor. And that's three for him. The floodgates have opened Dave Moore. They have indeed, Maggot. So 13, 11, 89. How many is that for Taylor tonight? That's, That's three. three to Taylor, three to Hines. <laughs> Taylor's <laughs> kicked, uh, he'll be the, what's he kicked? 17 for the season now, Taylor. Now, I know they've had some big wins. Hines has now got 28 for the season. He'll be leading uh, the goal kicking in the league. And Taylor and now pushes up uh, to 16. So good effort. They've got great return from Taylor, haven't they? He was in and out those first two or oh, three yeah, years. I think he got dropped in one of those premiership years, didn't he? Yeah, I think he did. So and uh, could have always had the opportunity to go back to St. Patrick's Old Boys, where yeah. he started from, but uh, was hung in there and got the rewards. Well done. Chance now for North as They go forward. Gee, four goals in ten minutes has really blown this margin out. The 45 points, 21 at three-quarter time. As Seymour, with a tired kick there, he kicks it out of bounds on the full. Him and his partner have become parents in the last few weeks too, Brendan Taylor. Had a baby. Congratulations to yeah. him and his partner. Yeah, my word. They've uh, done well. Young brawler. I've known him since he was in year seven, Max, and uh, very uh, proud of what he's become. 
13, 11, 89. Players 6, 8, 44. You said the margin, 45 points. Next week, we're at uh, Windsor Park. Launceston versus Lauderdale. From 5 to 2 is Brad Cox. Good job. Breaks a tackle. Kicks long. But uh, waiting back there. Defensive mark to Alec Wright. Goes short now to Seymour. Seymour. Well over 30 possessions now to Harper. Those two have been huge, especially in the second half. Sweeping kick here, looking for Woolley, who's drifted up. So they're pressing up now, Launceston. Kicks here, looking for Hines once again. Not this time, then Kermit's big fist away. Falls to Avent, oh, he's tackled high. high. No, yes. Umpire in the middle of the ground saw it. The uh, umpire close was a bit blindsided, so free kick Jack Avent. Defensive uh, side of the uh, centre circle oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Taken by Kerr. He nearly spilled it, didn't he? He did. Butterfingers on a night like tonight. Kerr, hit up. He good lead, good mark from Oscar Van Dam. Van Dam, inside, didn't make the bootlaces of Cox Goodjar. He twists and turns, still going. On the outside. North Launceston now inside, 50. Who's there? It's uh, Alex Lee gone forward. But they've done well here through Tyrrell to Harper. They go again. He wanted to give it to Wright. He goes over the top. Gillow's on the outside. Didn't get to him. He swivels and goes. He's been good tonight, Alec Wright. Hasn't done a lot wrong. Musica. Oh, he finds Burling all on his own. Burling sits and goes. Probably uh, was too unselfish in the end. But it's Thurlow. Two bites of the cherry. Takes the mark. No more than about 15 metres out on the slight angle. Jackson Thurlow looking for uh, goal number three. What do you think about uh, how they're using Jackson Thurlow? Mainly oh, up forwards. How, how good is he? Like, yeah. he's just, just, it's getting better every week. He's getting fitter. Um, yeah, he's just midfield, being pushed forward. Just, you know, if things go wrong, sometimes you get thrown to half back. Thurlow misses. Oh, he won't be happy with that one, Jackson. Oh, look. You're playing where you want, don't you? You know, anywhere he goes. I'm sure he'd like to kick a few snags, but uh, probably doesn't want to spend too much time in the back line where he spent most of his AFL career. I reckon he plays where he wants to play to a certain degree too. In, yeah. in this sort of thing, he'd just be switching around on the field when he sees that uh, his experience could be needed in a particular spot. Kerr got it forward. But only as far as 60 out, looking for Alex Lee, who's gone forward. Probably just having a spell. Once again, another player too risky to lose for the coming weeks. So Clarence next week we mentioned, and then the bye. Uh, we're looking forward to that, but a massive clash next week down at Blunston. Throw in. Centre wing. Boz, we'll get up to your whereabouts tomorrow night. You have a big night I hear at the basketball. Yep. Here's Harper. Wait for the next out, out of bounds. So pinging around there at the moment. Cox good, your little sneaky kick. It works out all right, in fact. Finds Nathan Pierce. He's on the 50. They'd like another goal, wouldn't they? Reward for effort at times. They just slipped away here. Seven goals, nearly eight goals now. Inside, 50, Avent. See what, they put some clamps on him in the second half. Have Launceston, and Avent's going to get the free kick, though. Just uh, overzealous on the defensive effort there. A Launceston defender. Is it Tuddy, was it? No. Anyway, it's a free kick to Avent. So Jack Avent, he's had a couple of good weeks. Really big possession games. 6 8 44 North Launceston. They trail Launceston 13 12 90. Scores were really close, and they just got that goal in there just before half time, Launceston. And I think it was crucial. Avent. Music says touched. Umpire says I don't care it goes through for a point. Just that one before half time, wasn't it? The Launceston goal. Just a little bit of gap. In Zach Morris? Head. Was it yep. Zach Morris, I think, Zach wasn't Morris. it? It was a, something out of nothing. And it just took a little wind out of the sails because they, they deserved to be in front or very little behind at half time. Free kick to Jake Hines up the ground on this occasion. Hines Inside. switches. 45 kicking out of Musica. He's confronted. Bill's out, chance here, man. She had a nice handball. Cox Goodger, 52 out oh. on the run. Oh, now, it's a goal anyway, is it? Or was it a behind? Now, I, I was looking at the transit of the ball, oh, guys. Jake Hines, Jake Hines bumped him after he got rid of it. I don't know whether it was high or not. But uh, he's gone down a little bit. It was hard. There was no doubt there was some force behind it. But uh, 
It's going to be downfield. The ball didn't go through for a goal. So we are a uh, downfield free kick from the goal line. The recipient, I believe, is Alex Lee, who kicks the easiest goal of all from the goal square. Uh, well, you might have to rinse and repeat that. A bit of confusion. What's happened here? He's going to have him. Or does the kick have to go back to where the kick was taken? So it's not downfield. It was after the it kick. It was after the kick. It was well after the kick. I would have thought so. It's holding his jaw here at the moment is Bradley Cox. Good job. It was well after the kick. It was because I was watching that's the ball. A, no, and that's a true. Yeah. That is just a, that's a true downfield. So he's going to take the kick uh, from outside 50. Jake Smith. He's just outside the attacking 50. So I, think he's put, a, I think he's okay. He was just holding the jaw there for a while. Then he comes, goes round. Gets height on the ball. Won't quite get the distance. Alex Lee in the goal square. Gee, that's a mark, is it? No. First grab, not the second from Bennett, I think it was. So it's going to be a ball up in the goal square. I, I, that's bizarre, Max. That was bizarre. It was. Foz, could you take us home? I'm bizarre. Okay, here we go. In the goal square, it's kicked out of defensive area there for Launceston. Now Casey Brown getting a bit foggy here at Utah Stadium. Woolley trials the ball. He's pushed off it by Newitt. Spills now to Salzburg if he can pick it up. He looked up first and fumbled. Now he's laying on it. Opportunity gone. And it will be a ball up here. And right. that, uh, that launches the Lauderdale game. will be interesting next week because, of course, uh, Lauderdale won down at Skybus Oval. Mm. Uh, you know, big home ground advantage, but they'll be up and about because of that. We were disappointed the match with them last night, for, uh, last week. I was, them, yeah, we? I was. And probably since that game, actually, they probably haven't come up to oh. the level they'd like to be. Sling tackle there, play on. As uh, that say Zach Burt with the eight, but it's Oscar Van Dam. Now to Cox Goodger, low kick, chopped off. Close to the boundary line, kept in. No. The wives who uh, started promisingly, but it's faded out a little. So tell us about tomorrow night, Fossil. Yeah, we've got uh, the big clash, the Tornadoes versus the Bendigo Braves. Uh, we're on air from 6.15. And uh, hoping that at 6.15 uh, we're going to chat to the uh, head coach of the Jack Jumpers, Scott Roth. So uh, that's going to be a bit of a highlight. Just for five minutes only, but um, we're hoping to get a quick grab from Scott pre-game. That'll be exciting for you, Fossil. Absolutely. I'll tell you what, he's one I do rate in the Jack Jumpers lineup. He He's uh, such a... Uh, a coach that just is humble and brought all those boys together from everywhere. A terrific season for he, Scott he, Roth. And he signed on, so that's good. Signed on. Bags will do that to you. Family throw in. Right to the point of the square. Cox Good just still in there, Max. He's still in there. No rest for him. Lead from the front. Especially after that knock. Ball comes out now. Holferman taken with it or without it. One or the other. Burling. Still a few spots up for grabs too in this Launceston lineup. A few of these boys on the fringe. There is, Macca. And if I was the, the North Launceston runner or the coach's assistants in the box, I'd just be sending the message out and say, look, Brad, come off. Yeah. He, can, he can teach these young guys as much now by watching from the boundary as yeah. what he can out there at this point of time in the game. Yeah, it's still plenty uh, on the line for him throughout the season rather than tonight. This game's well and truly gone. Seven plus goal lead from Launceston. In fact, it's 45 to 90, so they've doubled them. What have they kicked? Nine goals to three in the second half. So, look, it's probably where we thought they were. Um, North Launceston were right in the game up until half time, but just that, that back defense of uh, Launceston really come into it. They're on ballers like Harper and Seymour. It's got so much of the footy, and then when they've got a classy forward line with the likes of Thurlow and Hines sitting deep and Morris, hasn't really been his night tonight apart from that uh, excellent goal. But, um, yeah, just uh, winners all over the ground tonight and class. Here's Musica working back into some form. Hines puts the pressure on on the chase. Does well, Bennett. Hines gives away the free kick. No. Going to go to Hines. So Hines, handball, Thurlow, sets himself, misses near side again, Jackson Thurlow, raises his hands to his head and looks to the sky. We know what Fletcher Bennett did too wrong there. 
He's uh, a bit of a dirty night, Fletcher Bennett. You're normally used to him on that outlet, aren't you? But he's really had to defend for all his life tonight. Copped a few. They just haven't had the runoff half back like we've seen the last no. few years with North tonight. They've really, really shut them down the long system half forward line. Turnover. It's with Josiah Burling. Kick out was chopped off. Kicks to the goal square. Who can take a mark? Hines is there. In front of the contest. Chance for Jake Smith. Dodges around a couple. And then gets caught with the ball. <laughs> holding the ball. A quick couple of quick steps, wasn't he? Just looking the, for a, he an saw, opening. He saw the big sticks, Macker. Absolutely. And Curve is short. Into the gloom over there to Fletcher Bennett. Sticks pretty good to Ahern. Defensive 50. Can they build something here, the Bombers? Nice kick finds Jacob Kerr. Up to Man Shandon. Little handball over the top to a runner in Sulzberg. It sits in beautifully. Good footy here from North Launceston. Now to Pierce. Couple of kicks out from goal. Kicks to the goal square. Right. Here was Newitt. He nearly takes the mark. In fact, uh, was it out in the full it was? So promising passage of play. Just uh, sport by the, the last kick. Got some vocal support downstairs here. Half time at the AFL, Macca. Yeah, half time. Same score as I gave you a while ago, Foz. Sydney, 6 7 43. Richmond, 11 2 68. Buddy Franklin might have something to answer to Max. Uh, yeah, you go a bit of. Uh, Frank got you a little one? Yeah, just a little bit of a tap. How do you do? Tickle on the chin. Don't forget tomorrow night, as I mentioned, that game from 6 15. Tornadoes versus the Bendigo Braves. Two of the top three teams. Keely Froling not there. Tomorrow night for the Tornadoes on national duties. Oh. Is, uh, we've got a tackle there. Players diving in. That makes it a bit tougher for the Torns. Uh, Fossil? Yep. Tess Madgen is another player who's out for the Bendigo Braves, who's uh, another Australian player. So it sort of evens it up a little bit. Taken by Musica. His kick smothered. Sulzberger can't pick it up. He lays a tackle on Paul Freeman. Sting got out of this game. 23 minutes gone. So a four-goal blast in 10 minutes at the start of this quarter has put the result beyond doubt. 13-13-91 to 6-9-45. You can imagine Foz tomorrow come to a clock. He's going to have no footy to cover. He'll go to the Tornadoes game at about 2.30 p.m. and just sit there and wait for the basketball to start. Yeah, especially with Scott Roth on his way. Can't <laughs> wait. As uh, Casey Brown might have been tackled without it. Play on now. Gillo. Now to Harper. Oh, player slips over. Mm. That was Burling. Good Chance ask. now for North Launceston. He'll be asking Elfin for the keys, Max. Kick to Keep the middle of the ground. Up. As uh, Seymour drops the mark. It's out to Tuthill. Tied chase there from Newitt. Did pretty well, though. Push uh, Tuthill off his kick. Well done. Fine mark in defence taken by Bennett. Bennett. 24 minutes gone. Ooh. Well, you need this one to sound pretty quick, uh, Max. Not much going to be achieved here at the moment. Umpires calls it a throw. Oh, he's pointed. No. So North Lons has the kick going to go to Bales. Yes, you could do the right thing. Gave him back the ball. Nice to see. Theo Ives saw from that last contest. Then move the ground. Bales. Finds Avent. Just not going to sit for him tonight, Jackie Avent. Sums it up, probably. Umpire says, give it to me. Fozzle. Of course, we've got the five-day break here for North Launceston, which is pretty significant. They played last Sunday. So there'll be some tired legs out there. Yes. You get tired when you're 45 points you down. Do. You do. <laughs> but, <laughs> you but I mean, do. they have that yeah. second half fade out, so that, yeah. there could be yeah. something in that. Yeah, when, yeah, Lonsis did have a very tough game either, to be honest. Bailey Gillow tries to sneak one along, but doesn't get very far, because the umpire says bring it back to Joby Harper, the general. Joby Harper sees someone on. Palfreman, Burling, Josiah Burling. If it sits for him, it does. He's Thurlow. Bang! Oh, jeez, he looks good coming out of it. Out of there, Jackson Thurlow. Right in front of the scoreboard, and it shows North Launceston 6 9 45. Trailer pretty impressive, Launceston after quarter time, or well, definitely after half time 13 13 91. 26 scoring shots now to the Launceston Football Club. Thurlow was looking for his third, he's missed a couple since his second. That's a terrific goal. That is classy. That's his third. That's their 14th, 14 13 97. A commanding victory in the crosstown rival, North Launceston, at 6 9 45. And Brad Cox Goodger, it's not great news. He's uh, hobbling a little bit from the ground. In that last contest, he took himself over the boundary line and just uh, tried to collect himself, but 
just, just sore and yeah. sore and, and he tired. Had that, and he had that tight calf last week yeah. too that uh, Rob reported on, and he looks a very despondent coach as he uh, tried to sprint off then, didn't he? Yeah, we mentioned that big game next week against Clarence. Those games with Clarence, Lauderdale, Tigers, uh, North Launceston are going to be big this year for final spots. And as uh, Blues are likely to finish on top. Kick smother there from Lee. Avent gets it a stingle back to Lee. And just throw this inside 50. Tumbles the punt here. But waiting back there was Woolley. Should have taken the mark, didn't. Gets the handball and the recovery there to Boyd. He fumbles. Bennett falls down in the contest. Still a chance here for the Northern Bombers. Right on the boundary line. What Jacob Boyd sees it out of bounds. So we're at the uh, 26 and a half minute mark. Rob Soward will get a, an interview with the, the Blues player post game. I think he possibly might be having a, a chat to Jake Hines after his uh, big effort today. Three goals. Three goals also to Brendan Taylor. Boundary throw in. Over the back was Pierce trying to uh, get the spillage. Oh. Tackle there was Rickard. He's gone down hard. Jaden Hines gets a beautiful thump here to Harper. Now it's with Jaden Hines again. Leans back in a really good way to kick to Morris. Zach Morris. Invited now to play on. Kicks to half forward. Oh, that was always going to be a tough contest. Players going in. No collisions, fortunately. As Paul Freeman now gets it to Bailey Gillow. Impressive today. His kick, he's overcooked it a bit. Fletcher Bennett's back there. Release the handball now to Ahern. Kicks to the wing. Looking there for Kern. Hilly takes a good mark. The Ruckman Lee. Sideways handball to Avent. Nearly siren time here at Utah Stadium. Avent up the line here looking for Ives. Well done there by Jamison House. He kicks it long. Inside attacking 50. Josh Rickard's gone down sore. Chance now. Tyrrell keeps it low over the back. Thurlow. Recovery. Goal. Jackson Thurlow goal right on the siren. Four goals. Including three in the last quarter. So Jackson Thurlow puts the icing on the cake here. And what ended up being a big win to North Launceston, six goals to zero in the last quarter against the tiring Northern Bombers. 15-13-103. Launceston have defeated North Launceston 6-9-45. Yeah, look, good effort to reach the ton on a night like tonight, Max. Yeah, it was. Uh, conditions certainly weren't. As the night got got longer, the uh, the dew got heavier, the ground became slipperier, it was harder to mark, but you wouldn't have thought so with some of the marks and the clear, crisp possessions that uh, Launceston were taking right up to that 27-minute mark of the last quarter. They still, some of them actually look fresh still, which uh, is a testament to what Dave was saying earlier about North Launceston's, uh, correction, Launceston's uh, fitness level. Uh, Mitch Thorpe's been on record saying that they, they are the fittest club in the league. Other clubs have commented on it as well, and uh, it just showed tonight as well, not just the fitness, just the overall Superior skill and ball use, uh, certainly in the second half. Goal kickers for North Launceston didn't manage to kick one in the last quarter. They've got two to Pierce, two to Bennett, one to Sulzberger, and one to Newitt. And for the victors in Launceston, it was four in the end to Jackson Thurlow, including three in the last, three to Taylor, three to Hines, singles to Wright, Musica, Harper, Morris, and Paul Freeman. Three goals to Jake Hines, and he's down there with Rob Sowell. Rob, take it away. Thanks, Dave. Uh, just to grab uh, Jaden. Uh, congratulations Jake. on the win, Jaden. Uh, Jake. Jake. What a call, Jaden. Jake. <laughs> fantastic, uh, fantastic win. Um, just set the scene for us. Very tight first quarter. Quarter time looked like uh, four o'clock outside Busters in George Street in the old days, as the boys <laughs> in the box will remember. But then uh, you open things up. What was the difference in those last three quarters? Um, I think uh, we knew North were going to come out. They played good footy on Friday nights. We know that um, yeah, we're hunting now, so they're going to come out and give us everything, we, everything they've got. But I think um, just a bit of belief in the boys in our system, backing each other in, and um, just knowing that um, our fitness will come and um, that we can run over top of them, not to panic and just stay calm with, with everything. And um, yeah, that was mainly the main thing. We just um, had a bit of belief and. The rest, um, the rest followed with it. Great. The boys commented uh, just in that last quarter about your fitness. You certainly think that was a difference in that last quarter? Yeah, for sure. We've um, had a big pre-season and um, our standards at the club are very high, very professional. So um, that, was, yeah, that was definitely something that we knew that we had back in uh, at the tank there um, that we could run over the top of them. And, yeah, so we did. So that was good. Fantastic. Now, we've got a lot of people listening and watching on the stream and listening online. We want to know the secrets to this goal kicking. 
every you did it three times tonight. These goals, tell us about them. Uh, I don't know. I need to start practicing the easy ones. I think I miss a couple <laughs> of sitters and I kick the hard ones. So I don't know. Get to training and practice these ones and you know, yeah, you take them ones when they come off. So I don't know really what it is. Just to like you certainly, uh, you certainly drove the crowd wild with that tonight, and uh, the boys in the commentary box are excited. From us at City Park Radio, congratulations on a great win. All the very best for next week, and we'll see you down at Windsor Park. Good on you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rob. Great job down there on the boundary night. Uh, great interview there with Jake Hines. Uh, before we get to the boys for a quick wrap-up, uh, Groobs of Stats, thanks to Dave Gruber for a great job he does with the stats each and every week. Uh, hit-outs tonight, 60 to North Launceston, 25 to Launceston. So they were dominant in the ruck. The clearances, however, 39 to the Blues, 30 to North Launceston. So they really curbed the likes of Avent and Stingle and Cox Goodger uh, from getting on top in that area. Inside 50s, the Blues 12 to 5 in the last quarter, 49 to 31 over the day. And in the second half, it was 28 inside 50s to 11. So yeah. uh, that tells a story. Five marks inside 50. I think most of them to Jackson Thurlow in the last quarter. Uh, and only one to North Launceston, 11 to 4 over the night. And free kicks, the Blues 32. North Launceston 26. Thanks to Darren Lovell and Damien Donnelly. They've just sent through the stats. And wow, uh, Fletcher Seymour this evening, uh, 39 possessions. He had 13 in the last quarter, 23 in the last half. So uh, 39 possessions, including 28 kicks and 11 handballs. Joby Harper, 37. He had 12 in the last quarter. Um, so he had uh, 24 kicks and 13 handballs. Brady Paulman, 21. Bailey Gillow, 18 possessions. Wright and Thurlow, 17. Uh, Musica, 16. So some big possession winners there, Macca. I was just going to see if they had clearances there to see how many clearances uh, he had, but it might be on the other stat sheet uh, in uh, Fletcher Seymour. But, um, yeah, 14 contested possessions, hard ball gets. So terrific night. Fletcher Seymour, ring the drums. Best players and goal kicker. Best players and the votes, Maxi Walker. Thank you very much, Macca and Dave. Uh, do the North Launceston ones first very quickly. I thought Tom Bennett uh, tried hard all day or all evening. Uh, Jackie Avent, again, we mentioned career best form at the moment. Wasn't one of his better nights, but still uh, was in the better half a dozen so competitors out there for North Launceston. I thought Corey Nankervis, even though Hines kicked those three freakish goals early on, he did a very good job on him. Um, Alex Lee in the ruck, you know, you're always going to get 100%. From Alex Young, Will Man Shannon, two weeks in a row I've watched him now. His ball use gets, just gets better every time you watch him. Uh, Brad Cox Goodger, tireless worker again tonight. Um, really ne- looks like he needs a spell at the moment after 10 rounds, but uh, fought it out really well, Brad. For uh, Launceston, better players. Uh, Joby Harper, as you mentioned there, had 30 plus possessions. Probably unlucky not to get a vote tonight. Oh, not a vote. No, well, you nodded a moment ago when oh. you saw her. Who I had written down, so no, I was just looking. Yes, unbelievable. Um, thought Brody Powerman was good. Uh, Jackson Thurlow finished off with his four goals, three in the last quarter, uh, was very good as well. Uh, for the votes today, thought this guy, it just impresses me every time we watch him. Brendan Taylor, being a father, must uh, must must be getting enough sleep at the moment, Macca. Yeah, he's doing he, well. He's playing very well. Gave him one vote. Two votes to a guy who just controlled the back line and probably the only rebounder for the whole game tonight, Alex Wright, where he took the game on a little bit from half-back on several occasions, set up uh, lots of scoring attacks. And uh, three votes to um, the man of the moment, Fletcher Seymour, with 39 possessions tonight. Thank you there to Michael Walker, uh, our expert commentator this evening in those votes. One to Taylor, two to Wright, three to Seymour. Uh, thanks to the team tonight, Macca. Uh, thanks for being here. We always thanks, Fozzle. I'll be back games. here soon after uh, tomorrow. A bit of sleep tonight. Back yep. for the Eastern Rangers and the Tassie Devils tomorrow. Really looking forward to that on a, on a terrific ground here. They've had a couple of games in Tassie that have been sort of done with the weather, but hopefully tomorrow it'll be a terrific game. See the Devils in full flight. Thanks to you, Michael. Thank you very much, we'll David. You next All Saturday. the very best with uh, your commitments tomorrow night. Oh, he won't sleep tonight. No, no, absolutely. no won't. Don't forget, 6.15, City Park Radio Sport at uh, Elford Sports Centre tomorrow night. Big clash, the Tornadoes versus the Braves. Thanks to Dave Gruber uh, for his great work on the stats. Thanks to Rob on the boundary. Uh, thanks to one of the best in the business, Ben Donaldson on the camera. And uh, he's done a great job this evening. We love working with Benny and all the boys, of course. Uh, 
Mr. Cameron do a great job. Thanks to Ash uh, for the stream. Th- big thank you to Chris Ball back in the City Park Radio studio uh, for staying back late and keeping us on air. So we'll wrap up here. Uh, the final score here this evening. It was a big win in the end to North Launceston. It was sorry, uh, Launceston, it was. Uh, Launceston 15 13 103. Defeated North Austin 6 9 45. See you later. This sports broadcast is brought to you by LGAS for all your LPG needs. Talk to the locals with knowledge. LGAS, call 13 11 Local and live. City Park Road, 103.7. And 96.5 yeah, because I don't like tonight. I just have to move these table back in the middle. No problem. Yeah. Right. Best in the business. Good to see you. Uh, no, one of the best in the business. I, I can't upset Josh now. That I, you know. Josh has already said. Set us all up. He sent us. Um,